What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Vivid Seats. You know, we all love a night out, whether it's seeing your favorite band, going to a race, demolition derby, sporting event, whatever it is, getting out there and being part of the, an event in person is just the best. And with Vivid Seats, you can attend that concert, show, or sporting event of your choice at a great Price. Vivid Seats is the top source for tickets for all the live events you want to go to. You can sort the seats by price or look for seats in the section and row of your choice. And to make things even better, Vivid Seats is giving listeners an exclusive promo code for new customers to receive 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats to save even more money. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the Vivid Seats app. Use promo code TIRE. For 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats. Every purchase is backed by 100% buyer guarantee. From the biggest concerts and games to the hottest theater and more, Vivid Seats has it all. Download the app and enter code promo code TIRE for 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats. Make a memory that lasts a lifetime and let Vivid Seats help you get to your favorite live event. Just go to vividseats.com slash app, download that app in either iOS or Google Play, and use code TIRE to get 10% off your first purchase with Vivid Seats. We are also brought to you by Continental Belts and Hoses. I bet you didn't know Continental made belts and hoses. They do. And when you're working on your car, what you don't want are surprises. And I'm talking about dried out and cracked belts and hoses. They can cause all kinds of problems. Uh, so check out Continental Belts. Uh, they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE, that stands for Original Equipment, on the majority of BMWs and Volkswagens. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's their OE technology series, belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. You get enough surprises working on cars and trucks, a belt shouldn't be one of them. Go with the Continental OE technology series multi-V belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit oetechnologyseries.com. That's oetechnologyseries.com. All right, folks, on this episode uh, is a gentleman that needs very little introduction uh, from someone who no one had ever heard of when I started doing this to now he is way more famous than me and just destroying on YouTube. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Doug DeMuro. He created content without access, which is something I really respect. Uh, his hustle is strong. His, uh, his energy is great. And uh, I have a lot of respect for what he's done in the industry. It's, uh, I'm jealous professionally, but I also really like him. Doug DeMuro on the Smoke Tire Podcast. What's up, everyone? Smoke and Tire Podcast, and there are not a lot of fucking people that can get me to come into work on a Sunday <laughs> evening, but if there's one, it is this gentleman, Doug DeMuro in the house. What's up, my brother? Hello. Thank you for having me. How I are appreciate you? it. Yeah, good. Good. Eating some brownies. Uh, you are, you are, yeah, you just, before we just started the show, you were like, I don't eat during the day, and this is my go-to at night. Are you trying to lose weight? No, but I just kind of feel like if... I just eat. If you put something in front of me, I eat it. So my think mm. my thinking is now I'm just no longer going to have anything in front of me until it's time to begin eating, which is. <laughs> I do that. I don't keep food in my house. That's yeah. how I I have self control at the grocery store because right. I have no self control at the right. house. If you anything, I will just eat it. Chips. It doesn't really matter. And yet you're pretty thin. Yeah, I, I because I don't eat during the day. That's true. And then the evening comes and I can have as many chocolate brownies as I want. How old are you? Thirty. Oh, really? Oh, you got like four years left for that. You're fucked in four years. Dude, when you, I have my, you know, I was always kind of fat, but my skinny friends growing up, they could just like murder a pizza or whatever, and I'd just be so jealous. But when they hit 35, it was skinny, skinny, belly, stick legs. Yeah, I'm worried about that. that. That scares me. It's going to happen to you. So then I got to have like salads and stuff. Yeah, you're going to have to start doing that. Well, you, you live in California I now. Be this, I won't be able to eat this. I won't be able to eat brownies one. anymore. <laughs> you're going to be able to have one. And oh, then you're my done, God. Dude. But welcome to California. Thank you. It is wonderful. It's nice, isn't it? 
Yes. Sunshine's free, bro. I've never lived anywhere in my life where I we wake up, I don't have to look at the weather. Right? Every, you just know. You know. And you're in San Diego, too, which is even better. Which is funny, because I come to L.A. and people are like, oh, the weather down in San Diego is so nice. And I'm like, you live better. in L.A. What the hell are you talking about? But it's it, marginal. I mean, it's, you know, it's like the, the uh, it's like a, a Murcielago to the LP640. <laughs> you know, it's two great, two great things. Right. One is slightly better. You know, it hasn't, it's rained one time since I moved, mm-hmm. so five months. And, um, Which actually is probably pretty rare because you've been here over the summer. It usually doesn't rain even once. Never rains. Yeah. Never is anything other than just perfect. Yeah. And it's so nice for what I do because I'm going outside to shoot all these videos yeah. now. And I have to, you know. Yeah. I, I, when I was living in Philly, I canceled videos all the time. Dude, I started my career in New York. And when it came time to start my own business, you know, because when I started, I was working for somebody else. So I got paid a salary. So yeah. if we got to reschedule, well, I'm getting paid. Right. I don't give a shit. You know right. what I mean? But when it was like, oh, uh, right. my That's time is my right. money. Exactly. It was instantly right. was I need to go to California because I don't get and I never got rained out from 2009 until January of 2017. <laughs> I didn't get rained out yeah, once. That is the dream, and that's what I want. And the biggest problem in Philly was the snow. Because in the yeah. winter, beginning in November, people put their cars away. So then I was going down to Texas and Arizona and California to film all these cars. Dude, for that money you're spending, you could have been spending California rent. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So now yeah. we're here, and it's the greatest decision, and, I, and I'm and i going to be here forever now. And is uh, is your woman about it? You're married, right? I just got married last year. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You will get married very soon. April 20th, 420. It, you're getting married on 420. Is I am in, getting married Is that intentional? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe, you know, I you get you to do a little smoke. We're going to have a weed bar. Oh, <laughs> we are. Although I haven't had, I haven't smoked weed in two months. When, when you, I feel pretty good. Where is this wedding taking place? In um, Hudson, New York. Oh, it's going to be New York. Yeah. You know, I, smoke, we have some older relatives there. Do they smoke the pot in New York? Is that? I mean, I, I've heard they smoke the pot. <laughs> in New York. I don't think it's fully legal, but like, you know, we're, you know, whatever. It's 30 miles. We're like, it's like 30 miles from Massachusetts where it is fully legal. Oh, so. So someone can make a run. I don't. <laughs> if that's what you mean. So you know, I mean, getting it. But I mean, what if the cops show up and bust this thing? Are you serious, ladies and gentlemen? April twenty. That's in New York. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Check the wedding venues. I don't think. I don't think anyone's too concerned, honestly. <laughs> no. If the cops in New York have had don't really don't have anything better to do, come on in. Come to the wedding. <laughs> Hang out. <laughs> like, if you've got, if you really, if you want to be in the middle of nowhere and uh, well, hey, they got cops up there. They, can, they do have cops. Come up bust there. you. There's I cops. have good relationship with cops. With actually. the Hudson, New York Police Department. I have good relationship with with all cops. Really, I don't. I don't give the cops a lot of shit. I seem to recall one of the last, one of the last times I was here. You were talking about how you had to hire some killer attorney to defeat your traffic to you for your speeding violations you had gotten so much it's been a while since we've hung out i for a, for a while i got like a bunch of tickets for doing like nine over like and i got like four or five of them in a year those are the worst and it was just it was a disaster so i got mr ticket who's the hot shot california guy yeah. he- but i have a clean license now Mm. I have. I finally have. A, I've fully, been long enough. Yeah, I have a fully clean license, and it's dude. The insurance difference is. Oh my god. You know, I have insurance for what I do. Yeah. See that you're like the only person that hard. has personal. My company. Insurance my insurance company told me that Donut Media also has. Oh really? So, but the premiums have got to be big. Ten grand a year. Yeah, that's a lot. But I can write it off, it's, and okay. they cover cars for actual cash value, which is insane. That's pretty good. But the point I was going to make is. I got to keep my license good. Yeah, yeah, right. So like if you I'm, get points, you're in trouble, right? right? So I'm yeah. super careful. So like well, people try to race you me and stuff. You don't drive fast. No, well, you care. I actually don't. I like it. It's kind of no, embarrassing. You're, not you like drive you. slow as shit. <laughs> yeah. I drive fast, but I drive fast at a place and time that it's generally considered acceptable to do so. Right. Um, I just, you know, my daily, my this old Defender that can't even go over the speed one anyway. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you're on this Land Rover train. You still have your f- fucked up range? Yeah, that's on Nantucket. I left oh, that on yeah. Nantucket. So now you now it uses the word summer as a verb. <laughs> well, it's there when you're around there. You're around. So, we so does it, it have a heroin problem six <laughs> months out of the year? <laughs> like everyone else on that island. <laughs> Have you ever gone to Nantucket in the winter? We go every New Year's, yeah. It is. I'm ex- going in two months. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's an experience in the winter, isn't it's, it? I, I'm a, the, my friend who I go with thinks it's better in the winter because it's empty. There's no yeah. one there. You can go anywhere, do anything, drive on any beach. But is, are, is anything open? Yeah, there's a few restaurants that are open. Okay. But the stuff closes down after New Year's. So January to mm. March is really the empty. That's we went one year in March, and it was like, what do we do now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the next? Have you been going there your whole life? No, no. My parents have never been. I mean, I grew up in Colorado. And so is that your wife's them. family that goes there? No, her parents have never been So either. this is all you? Yeah, I just This is it. just you? Yeah. It's oh, how, wow. It's I didn't know you were voluntarily I'm the only young white. person. I'm the only young. <laughs> I thought you were born into that level of whiteness, but it turns out it really is just you. Yeah, I just really love it. 
I don't blame you. I, I grew up going to Nantucket. Like really? Every year from when I was a baby until I was about 10 or 11. Oh, really? Every yeah. year. And this past year, uh, I went back. I stole my dad's boat. I didn't steal it, I asked. But I took my dad's boat with my lady out there. And it was being, it was always a dream to be on a boat in the harbor. And oh, it do, you was, stay in, do you stay at the boat? Oh, basin? fuck yeah. yeah. It was great, dude. Except wherever I go with the boat, it's a beautiful boat. It's a it's a 48-foot power boat. I mean, it, it's spectacular by all measure of the word boat. Yeah. But wherever I go with it, they park me next to, whoa, you know, they park yeah. me next to a boat that has another boat well, on there it. There will always be a bigger boat. That's dude, the life, Well, the, the boat they parked me next to had a mini on it. <laughs> <laughs> on the deck, and they had they craned it off yeah, and I've then heard, drove it. I've off. heard there was a guy who had him who had him. I don't know if it was a mini, but I guess it. Yeah. Know, they would take a crane and, they and crane, crane, crane it off the deck. When I go, we walk on the harbor and say, "Oh, no, that'd be nice." Yeah. We don't. I don't. I'm not a part of any of that. We, well, let's coordinate for <laughs> next summer. My ancient Range Rover and. Well, your ancient Range Rover is the. That's the car of. Nantucket, well, the Defender isn't it? was sort of the car. Of yeah. I mean, you could drive around and see twenty or thirty of them. I feel like now it's Wagoneers. I mean, yeah, a lot of Wagoneers. Game is so of, strong totally. there right now. A lot and of Wagoneers. Cruisers. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know what you don't want to ra- a Wagoneer or a Land Cruiser or a Bronco is because those cobblestone streets will just rattle your body and the panels defender, off. The cobblestone this year rattled my uh, throttle cable, disconnected it, <laughs> it really and did. we had to fix it. I fixed it with a keychain, a key ring, and we drove around for the rest of the week with a key ring and hooking up my throttle cable because the car's such a piece of crap. Who's the guy on Nantucket? There is a guy. There's one Land Rover guy, yeah. and he drives a Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he, so my buddy, my buddy Mason, who lives up there, uh, and he runs the Rovers of Nantucket Instagram, and, and he takes great photos. But he he's the one who's like keeping my uh, Range Rover, and he uh, he told me that for years the car dealer, there's a Ford dealership on Nantucket. There for, is for years they had a sign up that said we do not service Land Rovers. <laughs> That's so. Well, I just I just followed Rovers of Nantucket. Let's see what they're about. They have the best. They, he's got the best photos of. of oh yeah, he of does because they get the best stuff. I mean, the I mean, dude, they're just, all they're all about these. I like this. This picture right here, because right across the street from this picture is the store that sells all salmon pants. Yep. It's called Murray's. like Murray's yep, Toggery, Murray's. Yeah. I think it's called. It's the best name for a store ever. Yeah, that's, uh, it's an interesting Rose place. Rose of Nantucket. I really love Nantucket, though. It's a, it's a fun, fun It's place. heaven. It's, Let's I think coordinate it's next summer the Nantucket Comedy Festival. I'm gonna go back for that for the stand up oh, comedy I didn't festival. Know that was a thing. Yeah, it's like a festival every going on all that. Dude, we there's the good film comics. Festival. Ron White goes, like Bill Burr does it. Like a bunch of these comics go out. Stephen Wright. Yeah, yeah. And so I kind of have an in now through a couple of my like radio friends because you have legit contacts in the. Because I have actual contacts because yeah. I live in Hollywood. No, <laughs> that's kind of true though. But I think we should coordinate for yeah. Nantucket next year yeah. for the comedy festival. It is. It's my favorite place in the world, and. Um, I just love it so much, and it's the best in the summer. But I'll tell you, this time of year, it's you know, it gets cold, and it's like, man. I bet fall would yet. be fall would be good. Yeah, right. It's, it's yeah, yeah. It's fine. It just it rains. And so when you go in the winter, you just drive the full lap of the island. I have on a friend the sand, who did that. Much the full lap. Yeah, it can takes you? hours. You can. It's not legal, but you can. But no one gives a shit. No on one the in the winter. Season. No one cares. There's yeah. no enforcement of anything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you could you could do that if you wanted to. I wouldn't try it in my Range Rover. You, I um, <laughs> when I was a kid, I got my first my first ever car was not really mine. It was a hand-me-down from my mother. It was a 96 Mercury Villager. <laughs> Actually, was it, the, was it the Nautica edition? You betcha. Oh, nice. Oh, boy. You it, had the little sailboats embroidered the sail- into the seats. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because my dad has been in the fashion business right. forever. And he was really tight with David Chu, the CEO of Nautica. And so we had to get... <laughs> he was get like, He was like, this guy can't know that we bought a Villager that wasn't a Nautica. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know what it looks like, it looks like a capsized sailboat. Because it's blue on the top and white on the bottom. For a lot of them had color matched wheels as oh, well. Oh, white, white, white wheels. wheels. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it did. Which was interesting. And I took it on the sand in Nantucket when I was 18. <laughs> and I sucked. got sand into the engine and blew the fucking motor. <laughs> How far did you even get? Like a hundred yards. Yeah. <laughs> did you get stuck then? Yeah, <laughs> not very far. Yeah. I wasn't good at off roading. <laughs> did, did you like at least take this the air out of the tires, or did you? I didn't do anything. No. I was I was unprepared as usual. And that was the end of the villager. No, because it got towed to that Ford dealer, and then Don subsequently Allen. got sent to the dealer in Jersey where we got it. 
We we traded. My mom traded in another villager. This one was not a Nautica. <laughs> the second gen villager. And one of the techs at the dealer put a new motor in it, and I we saw him driving it around later. It no had the way. same snowboarding stickers on no the back way. that I put on. Yeah. If you find the VIN, if you're going through oh stuff in your old house, find you find it. the VIN. I will car back. We'll <laughs> find out if it's still on the it's road. Probably, today. it probably is. The villager I thought was actually a really nice looking van. You know, it was, and it was the first minivan to have a rear seat entertainment system. It had the headphones in the back. Was it a VHS? No, no, no. It didn't have a video. It had the, you could get the radio uh, on headphones so it wasn't separately. Even, there wasn't even a screen. No, no, no. It was the rear seat headphones entertainment. And it also, it really did drive like a car. It was one of the first, because it was unibody. And it was small. It was yeah, and it was small. little. It was yeah. short, short wheel SWB. Yeah, it uh, was, though. I mean, because there was a, that was back when there was a caravan and a grand caravan. Right, it was right, intended right. to compete with the, oh, we're, we're pulling up a picture of the villager. Oh, specifically a Nautica Yeah, pull one. up a Nautica. There's nothing like. I have to make. Oh, my, look, look at it. There it is. <laughs> That's it. Wait, let me get the, I want to make sure I get the full, <laughs> the full res. Press photos. <laughs> There it is. There are those color match wheels. <laughs> Isn't that Although amazing? those were the wheels this, that no, I No, that, that's the later one, actually. That's the later. This is the one we had. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. And the oh, yellow pinstripe. Oh. Yep. Yellow Full pinstripe. pinstripe. This is it. What it was... actually drove pretty fucking good, though. I, I mean, I was only 16, but I remember that it drove better than the other. Uh, because some of my friends had caravans and right. stuff. This drove better. When I was a kid, <laughs> I wasn't into like exotic cars or sports cars. I was only into weird versions of regular cars. And so this that explains was, a lot about I was you. always like, this is the coolest van because they were, they were mm -hmm. rare. Mm -hmm. And the Villager itself was rare. Generally. It wasn't. Yeah, it didn't. Because my friend's father owned the dealer, we got we had several Mercuries. I had a Mountaineer also was my college car, which is the, the version of the Explorer. But it didn't occur to me till like later, like how rare yeah. the villager was compared to the caravan. You know, you're giving me crap for being white. My friend's father owned oh, the no, dealer. We're Took I'm, the 48 foot boat up to homie. I'm white. I'm white <laughs> as fuck. I, as Matt Hardigree would say, I have a podcast about watches, right? I'm pretty fucking white. Right. I, I, I own it as best I can. A man walked up to today. Matt and I went to a car show and a man walked up to Matt and Matt said, Oh, nice. Whatever. Watch. And uh, I was I like, believe it was a Omega Speedmaster. And I don't know anything about watches. I literally know zero. Like, Literally I'm zero. Sorry. You could get into watches. No, really. I don't. I don't know anything about anything. I know that except cars. I know and but, like places. I love a, places. It's such a short jump, dude. Yeah, but you don't understand. Like I don't. It, you'd be shocked at what I don't. What I don't know. <laughs> really? What don't you know? <laughs> I like recently learned how to tie a knot. I'm sorry. I'm dead. You mean like a tie knot or like your shoes? I can tie a tie. No, like my shoes, or I can like know. A, like a my, Okay, my shoes, I can do. But like, if you give me string, I couldn't. And up until very recently, it was like That's a big. So funny. I just, I decided at some point that I only wanted to focus on certain things, <laughs> and I did that. And That's I guess fine. it was cars. That's fine. Yeah, I get. Well, it's fine. Until I have a real can't. hard time focusing and learning and studying anything that I'm not truly interested in. So right. you couldn't you couldn't even fucking force me to learn calculus. And that's you know why I mean? watches but I've never it's just not I just I understand. Some people don't boats, get boats, I don't get any but, but man, planes. I got friends who are so into airplanes. JF. And usual. one time I was yeah, one time I was on a like a you know global in an international flight and I landed and my buddy would text me he was like I can't believe you didn't tell me what plane you were on and I was like you mean I have you were no on idea 747 right. 800 I don't know any of that yeah. stuff I don't I know I, mean, I, I was once on the double decker one mm -hmm. that came it took me from Korea but I don't like a 380 I don't know what it's the called. full length double decker yeah, 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 yeah. that's an A380 yeah, yeah. yeah and I boarded it was a I was on the business class I boarded with Isn't it dope? you board separately yeah you have two jetways so I didn't have to deal with the 380s are really people. really cool to fly on though I mean you might even if you didn't know about the plane was. I you must have realized like a, that you were on yeah, something Yeah, no, no. At the, I knew it was like, oh, I get to be on the double-decker plane. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't really internalize what it was called. But I do remember the takeoff was like nothing I'd ever felt before. It was very smooth. Like, you didn't feel... Very smooth, that you were... and you can't... Because you're 40 feet off the ground, you don't actually feel the speed mm. of it at all. Yeah. You know, uh, I live in, in Venice, and I can see the planes as they take off. You know, once they take off, I can see them. And the 380, compared to every other plane, it is so big when it takes off, and it takes so, and it's so low, and it moves so slowly. Because it's heavy. Yeah. So you can tell. You can tell the difference a hundred percent. You can watch really, the airplanes. Yeah, it's cool. Um, um, but yeah, I know. I understand your focus is narrow. It's super narrow. <laughs> it's and, and specifically the on the is, weirdest cars. The problem possible. is. Uh, the problem is, I have been. This has been incentivized. My my focus being narrow has been incentivized. This yeah. is what happens. You now have you, a living, right? And so now I don't even have to focus on anything else no. anymore. I don't have to think about anything if I don't want to. <laughs> totally true. Which is a problem because here's what's going to happen. You're going to ha hate it in five years. <laughs> I hope you don't. Can we talk about your Instagram? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Sure. What about it? Why I turned off? You comments? turned off comments. Yeah. 
Because you hate people. And that's not true. I don't hate people. <laughs> Has this been a topic on this podcast already? Uh, it's, it's come up. Okay. I don't hate people. Here's the thing about this. Like, right. I don't think a normal human... Like, I'm not, like, I may be big and bald and whatever, but I'm not, like, a tough guy. Right. Right? I have, I get depression sometimes. I've had addiction issues before. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a normal person and I have normal issues. I don't think that a normal person is designed to accept the instant unfiltered feedback of, of, two, regular, of, of 200,000 people. people. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, like I told you before we started, I, I, I... I control my weight at the grocery store, not at my house. Right. So people are like, just don't read the comments. Well, that's really a lot easier said than done. Yeah, I agree. And it's easier for me to just get rid of them. Like on YouTube, comments drive money. They, they drive money, right? You know, if you turn off comments, your revenue goes down noticeably. Um, but on Instagram, it doesn't. And it doesn't make me money. And it doesn't make me happy. But so what is right, it here's, to be here's there the counterpoint. For? Here's the counterpoint. Just don't you don't don't take them seriously. When people say you're nah. clearly hearing from an idiot. If someone, yeah, if someone I know, has I know. annoyed you so much that then you're then it's obviously someone who's an idiot. I mean, I honestly a lot I get a lot of good comments where I'm like, oh, it's important that this person reach out, or hey, this is someone I can work Look, with. I'm to really get a easy to find. I'm yeah. you, my email address is published on my website. But, but you can't can DM you look me. at these comments and be like, this guy's... Like, I had a guy the other day. I posted a picture of my detailers that just finished viewing my cars. And I posted a picture of the cars in the sun because that's what mm -hmm. you do after, you, you know, they're, when they look clean. And the guy replied and said, um, I hope that I hope they didn't do the detail job in the sun because that's terrible for cars. And I was yeah. like, you know, not only did they do them in the sun, but then they, they've dried them with sandpaper. Because, <laughs> like, you don't yeah. take it to... Yeah, that's, that's my... I just... You, you know, know, people are different. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I I'm... My default emotion is self-loathing. Like I have a great life. Okay, dude. so you, I when grew people up, say like, this privileged, stuff to I have you, great toys. I have I have a fiance who loves me and cats who love me and a, a beautiful home and uh, parents who love me. I have all the the makings of a good life, but still, right. My default emotion is self-loathing, and so I work on that. I'm, right. I, I have a therapist. I'm pretty sober for the most part now. I do the things I can, but the fact of the matter is, people can drive you to that when you yes, when someone yeah, says shit, shits. The, the the good comments don't stick. The bad comments do stick. Mm -hmm. I spent was spending way too much time reading it, and I decided, look, let me go for a while without these comments and try to read more books. And in the month of October, I've read five books, like five books. Like that's a lot of fucking books. Yeah. And it's, they're probably a lot better than Instagram comments. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, and so I just like, also, you know, I, I feel better. I, I feel I, that it is also what you just said. I think people don't get, it's amazing how much the negative comments stick and the positive yeah. ones stick. People say something powerful. It's like, okay, cool. Thanks. But it's just like, something negative. Of course. Like, you, I think about I, it. I posted like something awesome. Of course you think it's awesome. Right. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. I you should guy, think it's awesome. A friend of mine the other day told me that a friend of his told him that he thinks that I buy YouTube views. And first off, I, didn't, I don't no even think that that's all. a thing. I think you can buy it subscribers. Is possible. But you, you would lose money. No, here's here. The, I, I thought that too. For you and I, that's super, super dumb. If you sold a sponsored video. Uh, Here's an example, and, and he and doesn't do this. you have to hit a target. Monster Energy gives ten, Ken Block $10 million to make a Gymkhana. Mm. I'm making all this up, okay? Mm. And I, I, But, and and they guarantee a certain number of views. That's when it happens. That's when Because that's the happens. only way you can justify Okay, I get it. Yes. And that kind of stuff, I'm not saying with Ken, I'm not saying, but but that's an, the that's first an example of something. But that like, kind of okay. shit happens That makes all sense. I literally, time. so so anyway, yeah. the point is that I heard this, oh, this guy used by abuse, and that's obviously BS. I don't do that. I can't imagine. But well, if your goal is to get revenue from right, the videos, then buying the views but, is stupid But still, as fuck. I, I'm thinking about it a week later. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that... <laughs> no, I mean I, that's happened with me. I've I've had stuff that someone says that that it sticks for a long time, and 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 that's because I'm a fucking human. But with, doesn't you know, it stick less? You get you know two hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Doesn't it stick less as you get more popular? It has to be mm, early on. Yeah. I would really take them. I mean, yeah. I would I'm, I would lose sleep, and now I'm like I don't care. <laughs> I think I think the best thing about having two hundred thousand followers on Instagram or whatever is that I you know. I haven't suffered. Yeah. My followers haven't gone down. Right. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't care. Like, right, right, and, right. and my head feels better. Right. And so to me, that's a little more important. And, and if someone has a real question, they can DM me and I'll answer it right. or they can email me. Do you answer or they DMs? 
I do if they're like, if it's a real question or something. Yeah, I, I do you actually. How, there's so many methods of contact. Yeah. How do you deal with all that? I don't. I got okay. Think about it. I still Facebook, probably spend too much Facebook time. Facebook messages, on it. Insta DMs, yeah. Twitter, Twitter well, for DMs, me, Facebook's email. Pretty much dead. I get, really? I get almost. I mean, for for considering I've got seven hundred fifty thousand on Facebook, <laughs> the amount of actual real human interaction on it is approaching zero. They make you pay. Yeah. For any actual interaction, yeah. otherwise they don't send it out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I pay to boost my videos. The only place I yeah. pay. Yeah. Do you really? On Have Facebook. you found it successful? Yeah, I don't think I make money on it, but I, you know, Facebook's not a huge thing. It's like I pay ten bucks maybe a video or five yeah. bucks something like that. But I feel like why not? Because otherwise they don't send it out at all. Yeah, yeah. They've really I, figured true. out a way to milk you. They do. Facebook did. They do. And I, I, it's, I, I'm in a weird place because my fiance works there. Oh, really? Does yeah. she live up there? She goes up on Mondays and comes back on Thursdays. What are you going to do? Are you going to move up there? It sucks balls. I, I don't want to, and she doesn't want to. Hey, you can't leave. I don't want to leave. I came here. I, I don't want to leave, dude. She doesn't want to leave either. Neither of us want to leave. Well, this then she a, needs to find a new this job. This is a temporary arrangement, Has she I considered hope. coming to work for the Smoking Tire LLC? Uh, she has considered uh, running the, the books and stuff for my parking garage, but I would, she wouldn't find that rewarding enough. How about, has she considered coming to work for the dentist downstairs? She had an interview... I don't know if I should, I don't want to get her in trouble, but she had an interview at, at Snapchat, which is like six blocks from my oh, house, which would have been amazing, mm. but it didn't. It Isn't didn't Electronic out. Arts here? Yeah, they're right across, they're right up the road. Yeah. Know, yeah, there's a bunch here. YouTube is right here. Um, uh, Yahoo is right here. There's a, there's a ton, right? Right across the street, there's a ton of tech offices. Take that, Silicon Valley. Yeah. So, and you got you nothing should, on bro. Playa Del... What is this called? We're, we're, in, Playa, we're in Playa Vista right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, that's something I just can never figure out is where one town ends in L.A. And well, another, certain towns are part of Los Angeles. Yeah, and that's and another thing. Aren't. It's simply too difficult. Yeah. I can't be a part of it. I've decided I don't, I don't want to know. Um, <laughs> don't yeah. you agree? Yeah. I mean, well, it helps me <laughs> know where I need to be <laughs> when I get around. Oh, I just use Google. Yeah, that helps too. It just tells me where to Waze go. Waze is the fucking best thing to happen to LA. I disagree, but we don't need to get into a long thing. Do you know why? I deeply believe Google's better. I drive 40,000 miles a year, okay. and I deeply believe that okay. Google is better. Okay. Now, you got to use Waze for the cops. I don't. Well, yes, but he, in LA, you like LA is a big fucking grid, right? So it's I know how to go everywhere. Like you know what I mean? I could I could dictate you to Riverside right, right but now, but you don't know if it's gonna be a ton. But of it's traffic. a grid, so it's which way has right. the least traffic and in real time. So that and also I the swear Google is better. You should run them both simultaneously and see what happens. I should. I've done it before. There's probably and people be that surprised. do that. I yeah. bet there's they are. So should we talk about you instead of me for a minute? Ah, well, so what? What the fuck happened? You yeah. You started by writing. I started writing, yeah. Yeah, and then and then you started making videos. Yeah. The early ones were a little rough. <laughs> oh, the early ones were brilliant. Yeah, the early ones were a little rough. But then it seemed like when yeah. you got the auto trader gig that it then the YouTube thing really fucking blew I was able up. To focus on it more. So what, what happened? What happened there? It really was once once auto trader hired me to do the to oversteer I was able to kind of, I had, I didn't have to keep hustling so much for writing gigs mm -hmm. and I was able to focus more on YouTube. And also it, that just happened to happen right at the same time that I started making the first little bit of money on YouTube. Because really up until, I mean, I had, you need to get like a hundred, 150,000 subscribers had, before you make any money. 150,000 subscribers. And I truly was, I didn't even pay, I didn't even for one second think that I could ever make money on YouTube, mm -hmm. even at that level. And um, then I got the Aston Martin and the bumper to bumper warranty and all that. And that then it kind of was like make, I made like a thousand bucks one month, and I was like, "Oh, like wait a yeah. minute, people make money on this." And then it just kind of yeah blossomed a little bit from there. Then once I once Auto Trader happened, I could focus on it more. I uh, started doing two videos a week. That helped yeah. too. Well, yeah, the, I mean, obviously it's a volume game, yeah. right? You know, when I was doing four a week, it was like a ridiculous amount of I fucking know, money. And that's why I see people like vehicle virgins putting up a video every day. Like that's insane. Yeah. Well, that's what YouTube kind of wants that's what now. they want yeah they're really they it makes it very hard for car people you know yeah to, to because cars inherently you know fuel time money totally. you can't do it from your fucking couch vlogging is a ch is a challenge and i really respect i, I hear people on oh, vehicle versus i don't like him whatever i respect the hell out of anybody who's able to put up daily stuff film yeah. it and edit it and yeah. make it interesting enough even though he's not getting like the same like a million views on it, each video yeah. that, that, you can put up something every day you get one hundred fifty thousand views that's insane yeah. to me yeah i mean i was doing four car reviews a week and they're pulling one hundred fifty thousand. it was like woo yeah. but i but i burnt myself out on it that's the thing that, I mean, thing. I I, just, I caught myself. 
it wasn't the, that the work was so hard. I just caught myself like repeating myself. Like I go, man, I, I, I'm yeah. not saying I can't talk about the steering feel one more time. Well, that's the thing. You drive a car for 20 minutes to make a video and you've got this checklist of brakes, totally. power, steering, ride, space, totally. value. But so I just had to be like, man, I've earned myself the right to drive a car on my own time right. for a little bit <laughs> right. and then come back and talk about it. Yeah. Um, do but wait, you ever, has, hmm. do you ever find that you forget that you've already said, like I'll do a review on like a Mercedes <laughs> yeah. and mention an infotainment system quirk. And I put it, I already did it eight months ago, but I have forgotten. And people oh, come to me and with like, a different Mercedes, with a different one, yeah, yeah. but because there's so many people yeah. come to me and say, I can't believe that one car with that one thing. And I'll be like, I don't even remember what you're yeah. talking about. Cause there's so well, many. I get a diff. I don't get that quirk, but here's what I'll get. I'll get, you drove uh, a modified Jetta in 2014. <laughs> what did you think about the shock tuning of those Bilsteins versus the so what KWs? Do you say? What do you say? It just, I have no. I have no. I question. just go look, man. You know, I talked about what I was feeling in real time, and if you weren't standing here, if you had emailed me that question, I would go back and watch my own video exactly. to get you. The I tell answer. people that sometimes yeah, people yeah. Will be like, "What did you like better, the whatever, the whatever?" And I have this scoring system at the end of my videos, you know, the Doug score, where yeah. I and I'm like, that dude, probably helps. I'm like, dude, if it beat it out in the dice score, then that's the one I like better. Right. Truly. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't screw, you know, I'm not, I'm not, this, this, these are subjective things. Right. They're based on my opinion. So yeah. if I said it was better than them, then I, then it was better. Well, that's, that's sort of, but here's the thing. If I, if I get a press car and I have it for a week, I remember almost everything yeah, about the it. Longer, the longer time, the you're longer with you're with it, the more, uh, the more it, it's, it really sticks totally. to me. Do you get any press cars? Very rarely. Yeah. Very rarely. I'm Only surprised you haven't taken at this point. I mean, I, in the beginning, obviously, one of the best, the, one of the things I respected the most about you, because to me, you were the first or one of the first people to create a career with no access. Yeah. That was like really well, I was, smart. I was just telling the story to someone the other day. The press, one of the press car agencies turned me down early That's on. really funny. Even when I was writing for a job, they turned me down and said, nah, you're not ready yet. That's very. You're, you're not. You don't have enough of a. Do you remember that guy's name? Yes. You and do? who yeah, was it? No. Is they still working? I'm going to move on. But anyway, so. Oh come so, on. But the point is. Oh wait, real quick. A couple of people have been asking. I've oh. seen it pop up. We, if you want to talk to Doug or I about car advice, anything, get into the super chat, and uh, we are going to do the last thirty minutes of the show. We're going to go through your oh, super chat nice. questions. That's, That's how that works. So we got a bunch already. Look at this. Whoa. We got a bunch. So if you want to do that, okay, continue. The, the you do, you got turned down for a press card. So then I'm like, we'll forget it. I don't need that. So I started filming videos with my own cars yeah. and then with my friends' cars. Yeah. And that just kind of blossomed. And now it's basically what I still do. I mean, the press, to me, I don't want to tread lightly here, but to me, the press car game is a little bit of, we gave you a car, so you have to, I don't necessarily, you have to say nice things, but like, I just don't want to be, I don't want to have I don't anybody think that, I haven't ever, found that experience at all, actually. Yeah, but you're, you're yeah, maybe. You're I've a big following. But they you can't, have a bigger following than me. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. I, I guess I guess maybe not. I, like, I could probably say negative stuff. But I have heard of press, of automakers blackballing guys because they said too much negative so, stuff. So, and I, I don't want, I don't think, that. I can rent a car from Turo and yeah. beat it up all day long. Or you know, borrow some dude's car. And if he's mad at me, yeah, it's fair. One guy. I don't fair. care. As opposed to having all of Subaru North America, Porsche car, whatever, That's fair. hating you. you it's know totally I mean? fair. I found that you can say negative stuff if it's factual and if you can if you can back it up. If you're detailed about it and you say, This is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, the person who's in charge of getting you that car is not the person that designed the car. If you say this thing's a piece of shit or this is the worst car ever made or whatever. I mean, I've seen a couple of your headlines that are like, here's why, you know, this is the worst car ever. That's totally, totally fine. That might get you. And I fear that. In a little and trouble. I don't want, I don't want to have to fear it. I want to be able to it, say it. whatever the hell oh, I fine. want. And generally speaking, I think people agree with some of the, points I take even on some of these cars. I just, I don't know, probably I could do it. And I do take some. I don't want to have like a holier than thou attitude on press card. I've taken already two since I moved to San Diego five months ago. No, so I don't like, think it's holier than thou. I think your point is totally valid. But I think the the perk of this job, you know what I mean? It, well, there's a couple perks. One, you make your own schedule. You, you know what I mean? You're your own boss, all that thing. Yeah. But the ace perk is genuinely getting to drive the newest stuff on your own time. I agree. And actually press launches. Like, I don't give Can't a fuck. That. I don't give a fuck about the flights. I don't give a fuck about going to Portugal or whatever. Some people think that I'm going on a vacation. I just flew 
18 hours each way for 30 minutes of seat time in a Lamborghini. In like which car? The Aventador SVJ. Now, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. Aventador SVJ is pretty fucking awesome. Car was really cool, but it, but I don't. It wasn't cool enough to justify eighteen right. hours of travel each way. But when you meet the engineers, yeah. But Matt, I feel don't like you, you think get, you get don't answers you think that, the that you point, can't get. Don't you, I agree. I agree. That helps. You get. You learn the why, not just the what. But don't you also think when you they have they bring these people around and oh you can become friends with them so that to try to mm-hmm. get you on their positive side and stuff like that. And Dude, so, I oh, just, you know I I know that guy. I don't want to say that negative. I thing just about trash him. the new vantage, and I'm very. I'm not very good friends, but I have a really good relationship with the Aston Martin guy. He was bummed. He he was the, he was embarrassed. He's sending me another one. He asked if <laughs> I, I would double the no, negativity. He, he, he asked. He said, "Look, the the car you drove was an early production car. We took it back. One, we took it apart. It had these issues. W- would you be interested in in trying again?" So you had some sort of problems with the car you had like technical i had le- i had legitimate problems with the car the, the body panel gaps were horrible yeah. it the parking sensors would go off even when something was like seven eight feet away there was an unidentifiable chiming noise that would come up it had a it had a <laughs> airline it was it had a bunch of issues it did I, and i and i said it had a bunch of issues like yeah and so they were they were embarrassed for their product and they want me to have another go with what they call a more uh, current product. Yeah, so, yeah. all right, fine. I get it. I, and I, uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm trying not, to sell you on press I'm cars. not opposed I'm just... to going to press launches, but now I've gotten to the point. God, last, here's a crazy one for you. Last year, I did a, the new Jeep Wrangler press launch, which mm. was the biggest, you know, debut of the year, mm. the Ford GT and new Jeep Wrangler, the biggest one, because it's such a hot car. And I, Chrysler flew me out. Now, I paid for everything else. I paid for my hotel, I paid for my rental car, but Chrysler flew me out, and I disclosed that in the video. Yeah. People flipped out. I can't believe you're in their pocket. Oh, fuck off. The idea that I would be, would have, that they would like, <laughs> that they would be able to sway me with a, with a coach with little a plane seat. ticket. <laughs> fuck you, please. Jesus, come but, on. But people said that. So this, I just went to my, the next press launch I just got back from, so it's been nine months, uh, was Hyundai Veloster N, and I paid for everything. I was like, I, that way, I can take, I can say. Yeah, you I can, can disclose in the thing. Was that I in Germany? No, it was in Sacramento. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was right. easier. How was that car? Um, it was it was it was good. Honestly, yeah. it was really good. Right. Two hundred seventy five horsepower. It, U.S. pricing still has not yet been announced, so it's like I don't know how to say whether it was good or not. If it's uh, twenty five grand, it was amazing. If yeah. it's thirty, it's like uh, I'm not so sure. I had the Veloster R spec a couple months ago, and I didn't love it. There, I had some problems with it. Yeah. But, but, what, what don't you think it's cool? It's three doors. I mean, got three doors. Do you realize they make a separate body for right hand drive cars? I didn't, but yeah, that makes sense. Now that, that I, now that I think about it, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. it's. I'm like, what? How? Here's the thing about that car. Why not four? <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I know. here's on. the problem with the three doors. Like, it's the same problem I discussed earlier. Cars with three wheels. Like, <laughs> they only have three wheels because it would cost. It would be way more difficult to make them with four. But like, the problem with the three door thing is the driver's door is too long. So you can't park it close to stuff like it's like I think you know their I mean? argument would be that that that's the benefit, which is that you have more room to get in on the driver's side, and so See, the I driver gets more that space. I agree with you. I hate coupe doors. There's nothing worse. That's than why a I like the M3 door. better than the M4 because the shorter doors yeah. make it easier to park in the garage. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. But other than that, <laughs> I, on, in terms of driving experience, I thought it was a pretty good car. I got a um, video going up on it Tuesday. I think so. Uh, cool. I look. For, I, I look forward to. You. I get the G seventy in a couple of weeks. Yeah, the I new really Genesis, want, I'm really looking forward like, to that. Which like the too. interior looks pretty nice. I'm pretty, yeah, pretty and I think they're offering it with the stick and they are, and but the only LSD. the small motor with the stick. If you want the big motor, you got to get the auto, which sucks. Well, that's life, though. I know that's typical. Very typical. It's life in the world that we oh. live. In, world that we should be happy that they gave us a manual at all. I don't think. I don't think you you need press cars in your career at all. But I. But I think that being able for me being able to go on my own adventures with these cars that's the big benefit is the there benefit. is no doubt yeah. that because I'll, I'll come and I'll shoot a video with a whole car in six hours yeah which doesn't I mean you're I'm able to drive it enough that I feel comfortable saying certain things about it but a week you really get the feel yeah. here's what this car is like to when I took with. it to the store when I right. took it on this trip Here, when I, I took the, it in the, the canyons, trunk does this did, weird yeah, thing that's yeah. annoying you don't yeah. find stuff like that out at night when it rains stuff like yeah. that you don't find stuff like that out yeah. until you're I agree with that that's the big benefit and so I take some here and there plus it's easy they come to your house dude I just was talking to these guys uh, the straight pipes from Canada yeah. Yuri and Jacob yeah. great guys they don't uh, deliver in yeah, Canada, so they have they to drive have dinner like two them. hours yeah. to go pick them. What a nightmare! Oh, but then again, like we're spoiled because they come to a house, got a full tank of gas. We it's are fully spoiled, clean. but yeah, but like 
it it really does add a lot of like it could be if you have to, it could be a whole day in LA if you got to go forty miles. Oh to get yeah, a car. that's an entire day. Matt, can we discuss LA traffic? We talked about this last <laughs> time I was here, but I want to talk about it again because it's the single worst thing that's ever happened in it's humanity. It's horrible. I drove my Ford GT up here because we had this it's lovely, show. by the way. Thank you, ex ex Carl Brower, probably ex Carl Brower. And I was in traffic last night. It's Saturday. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I was in traffic last night for an hour. Uh huh. The whole time, bumper to bumper. Yeah. From it's Orange shitty. County all the way up here. Yeah. How do you... Well, first off, Saturday afternoon is the worst traffic no, don't give the me that week. shit. That's, well, that's the weekend. That's no, the no, weekend. No, but everybody's out and about on a Saturday afternoon. I read a book. I read a whole book on traffic. And Saturday from <sighs> 2 to 5 is the worst traffic in Los Angeles. There's no good time to drive an automobile. There isn't. Did you, what did I drive to the, to the Peterson this morning? <laughs> a my, scooter. My scooter. <laughs> that's what I do. I, to, I get around traffic by riding a scooter. Actually, driving to the Peterson this morning, there was no traffic because I left at 6.30 yeah, left... in the morning yeah, <laughs> on a, a Sunday. It's a good time That's a good time. Yeah, when that's... I go film in the canyons, the canyons are fucking far from here. Like from from my house to the canyons is like a solid hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, so it's four miles in other words. Yeah, right. It's it's only about twenty, <laughs> really. But I leave it. I leave it. I go. Okay, what time is sunrise? Sunrise at seven oh one. I leave at five. You know, fifty. Wow. So I get to the mountain as the sun comes up, and then and then when I'm done, I have to drive back in midday, and I sit in traffic all day. But yeah, you can't I just, win. I, it sucks. That's the that's one big it benefit does. of San Diego over LA. Totally. That is that is a, a huge one. San Diego doesn't have those kinds of issues that we have. But no. like but when you I'm the not, airport. but you when the I'm world not airport. Yeah, but when I'm not um fun. I have the scooter and if I'm not working, I typically am walking actually. Like, have you fucked with bird scooters yet? I don't I I, I love them and I love that they exist, but they're super unsafe. They are super unsafe. So I don't want. I don't need to get a traumatic brain injury. What do you think is less safe, a UTV or a bird scooter? Bird scooter, but it's close. It's crazy. You Dude. know what you see in Venice all the time is a parent with their child on front of them oh in a bird God. scooter. It's unbelievable. I San Diego Police Department tweets out the all the big crimes and accidents uh -huh. and stuff and, and car crashes, and it, it, every day they tweet out three or four of the the big ones, the ones that a bunch of people responded to. You know, responded to. It is unbelievable how many major car accidents yeah. with injuries involve either a bird scooter, a yeah. bicycle or a motorcycle. Seriously, 70% yeah. are yeah. one of the three. And often the bird scooter's not getting hit by anything. Someone falls off oh, and they and fracture they get, their whatever yeah, yeah, or they yeah. break, they hit their head. Well, a bird scooter has a five-inch wheel. Yeah. I mean... And they go. The kind of <laughs> yeah, they go like 20. Yeah. The kind of crack that you wouldn't even feel in a car right. will send you totally. flying yeah. off of off But of with that scooter. said, I love... The mobility that like you can jump on a thing and just go. I love that. And then leave it. And leave it. And That's leave such it. a brilliant idea. Yeah. And I love that stuff. And anything to get people in Priuses off the road and like doing that stuff instead so that I can drive and have yeah. some fun. Um, I will say I live in this neighborhood in San Diego. It's like this very old neighborhood with all these old people. And you go on next door. Uh -huh. There's a bird scooter in front of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Been in front of my house for 20, 20 minutes and yeah. I just can't take this anymore. And I'm like. Next door is <sighs> fun. Oh, it's the best. It's really we use next door for all kind of weird things. And <laughs> a friend of mine bought some uh, a friend of mine collects bourbon and uh, just went on next door and was like, Hey, you know, I'm if anyone has any old bourbon that they don't want to get you know, I'm interested in collect or whatever. Someone hit him up, her husband and just died, and they had eighteen bottles <laughs> of prohibition bourbon. <laughs> like and he, he, you know, he was like, oh, I don't know, this stuff's kinda old. I don't know if you could drink it, whatever. And he gave her like, I don't know, eight hundred bucks for the whole for the whole lot. He went home. He called Christie's immediately. Christie's sent someone to his house no within way. two days, and the bottles are worth like two to ten thousand dollars each. No way. Yeah, they're going in their full auction. Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. Oh my God. Dude, he's a boss. We we drank some of it. It's a, it's really good. What are you good. drinking it for? The bottles were two to ten grand. Know, How so much does each sip they worth? They took um so they took of the eighteen bottles, Christie's took like the ten or twelve best. Oh, okay. And then he sold three or four on his like Facebook group and he kept a couple and we we sipped a little bit of wow, them. Yeah. That's that's incredible. Yeah. Usually, you know, Nextdoor does not provide such have you seen the best of next door Twitter? No, I bet it's really. Oh, good, it though. is hilarious. The, the you know they find screenshots of complete idiot people who don't know how to use computers. Best of next door. Let's find out. One of the all time great Twitter feeds. I spent. I was up to like three a.m. reading this the other day. Oh I strongly God. recommend it. How is everyone Sunday? I hate to disturb this peaceful day, but is anyone else finding egg rolls <laughs> on their sidewalk? <laughs> oh, I, well, I guess I'm gonna be following this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know, it's old people who are like they got nothing else to do, which oh, is great. Yeah. Oh yeah, whoever's blasting party rock anthem past one a.m. It's almost twenty nineteen. Be embarrassed. Oh, this is great. 
<laughs> it's the best. That's a good follow. Yeah. I'll take that. Uh, yeah. Um, so what are you uh, what are you driven lately that you liked? Uh, that I liked. What have I driven lately? Or that you hated? Um, what have I done lately? I, dro- I recently drove the new Land Cruiser, which is a car that I love deeply. Yeah. I actually was at considering I'm going on a, a national parks hiking road trip with uh, Hannah yeah. in December. I was uh, considering yeah. asking Toyota for one. Where for are you that. going? Uh, Zion, Bryce, Grand uh, Canyon, the typical. I've done these, but she actually hasn't. Oh, so, uh, not, we're not going quite that far. Grand Staircase, Escalante, Zion, Bryce. We're going to stay at the Amanjiri for a couple days. You know that place? <laughs> oh, dude, this place is so baller. Um, the Land Rover, the, uh, oh, the 2013 <laughs> Range Rover launch was at this place. It's like, what is it like to be you? It's you, like, you look at this place. Have- it's hidden in the desert. It's ridiculous. It's just so far in the middle of nowhere, and they've really hidden it amongst these rocks, and it's all architectural and crazy. <laughs> yeah, is there a is there a hotel here? There is. This, is, this, is the, <laughs> this this video hasn't really shown much of it. Here's the pool. Oh, my, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty rad. You know, you live the dream. So do you. Yeah, but I don't stay. I, when I went to Moab last year, I stayed at Best Western. Well, you, I could stay in a Best Western, but I'm well, trying to impress my lady. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you could stay you, at a Best you Western. You use the word <laughs> summer as a verb, son. I don't. I only go up there for a couple weeks. You have a car that lives there forever. Yeah, but it's worth like three grand. <laughs> That's true. It's the biggest <laughs> piece of crap car that has ever existed. But it is you at, owe your career to it. That is true. You? It is at Land Rover Cape Cod right now getting the very tail end of the CarMax warranty. Oh it, my God, you still have that it. That warranty expires December 6th of this Holy year. So like shit. five more weeks. Fix everything. Yep, that's what we're doing. We're that's taking so in. crazy. But it doesn't need all that much because I've already you've already you have <laughs> no. a whole other car like yeah. there's no we replaced the transfer case your car is five the, grand. It's the leonard skinner of land rovers <laughs> there are no original <laughs> members left in the only car. the body everything else has been totally replaced redone that's so funny yeah. what a piece of shit yeah it's a terrible car you like and, the and new ones, I'll, though? I'll tell you when this air goes out this time we're doing springs yeah, yeah. carmax pay for it it's one thing when i have to pay for it like a grand right. a corner yeah it's over oh fuck how many times has it gone out uh, I think I've had six different air suspension replacements, <laughs> but a couple, six? six, six, like six corners. So like one, oh two, you know, God. the rear has only gone once each time, but the front's a couple of the front. I've done three in like front, right. It's like, come on. Front, right. Is or the front, one, left, huh? whichever one. But yeah, one that of them, one I of them like do. continually goes out. Yeah. Which means I'm going to have to do it again. Oh and then, and then we, God. then we convert to springs. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I think then you ditch the car. No, I, what am I going to do? I, I don't have an, I don't have another option. Get, get your three grand and buy a four runner. No, call no, no. It again. I know I need, I need a Toyota. That's yeah. what I mean. So you, is the new Land Cruiser good? You know what the problem with the new Land Cruiser is? Uh Oh, the adaptive cruise control doesn't work under 20 miles an hour. Now, Really? Yeah, which is like an old school adaptive cruise. You know yeah, how they would like yeah. turn off at low speed. Disconnecting. I, yeah, it beeps and then you're you take over. In my Mercedes, it's it goes all the way down to zero, so I can sit and bumper to bumper, like when I'm coming back from Orange County after filming, just bumper yeah. to bumper. Well, that's what that's, and not and not ever touch the pedals. Yeah, that's what you want. That's what you want. Yeah, totally. I sat in one of those nightmare San Diego traffic jams in the the S class. Yeah, the, the, and, <laughs> you sit there with the massage seat oh on and God. Distronics doing its thing, and I mean, you dude, know, I wrote thirty five hundred <laughs> words on the S class's seat. Just the seat. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't talk about the whole. I had. I had a, a S sixty three convertible, two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars. I wrote thirty five hundred words on the seat. That car is so nice. It's so and you know, thirteens. Nice. I want to do a video on this, but thirteens, which is the first year of the current body uh-huh. style, they're like forties. Yeah. And you Cheap. get that with CPO. It's like a. That's a pretty. It's a lot of car. Good car. Yeah. yeah. How do you like your Vagen? Uh, it's fine. I, you know, I, I daily it and you know, I daily it. I mean, I drive it. I drive is it, it to Orange exactly County. the same as if it was a 350. Yeah. Like if you got a 350, instead I don't of the, behave any differently. Cause the thing is I drive my GT and the defender almost yeah. all the time around town. So for the wagon, I only use it like when I'm going to Riverside County or something to film. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I don't, I mean, I hate to say this, it's embarrassing, but I don't really care that much. I should have just gotten a 350. That's fine. And I think maybe next time I will, because what is it? I have other cool the cars. The extra power now. does not help. The thing you. is, when I lived in Philly, I had one parking space, right, and so I right, wanted right. a car that could do it all. That yeah, like yeah. could you know pick up my parents at the airport and carry a desk and be yeah, fun. Yeah. Of, well, now I, I have more. the automotive journalist dream. Right, I right. can only have one car for everything. Yeah, and I and exactly, and that's yeah. it. But now I have you know a lot more space. Yeah, you have one car for this thing and one car for this thing. Right, and one car and for the, this there's thing. no weather concern anymore. Yeah, so like the roof is always off the Defender, and so yeah. I, mean, I don't, I don't. People occasionally come up to me with the rain, with the wagon, and they'll be like, "Oh my god, an E sixty three wagon!" And yeah. I'm like, "I, I barely even internalize that it's that it's special anymore." Which well, is it probably sad. It, 
Yeah, but it probably. I think the the special thing about it is how non special it yeah, is. Yeah, that's right? true. That's that's sort of its. And virtue. I only paid forty for it, which is incredible. That's I mean, awesome. CPO or yeah, forty three. Rad. And it's a great car, but I just don't. I don't think about it. Ooh, oh, the, what, what the hell is this? This is a this is some sort of foreign market. Land. It's like a JDM <laughs> Land Rover. I found. I don't know a Land Cruiser. What is that? Oh, here's the actual one. What's the actual Land Cruiser? Right. Yeah. Is it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the, the current one. This is it. Yeah. Um. It is such an unusual. It's car. way better looking than the Lexus version. Lexus version has the ugly mouth. The LX570, is it the ugliest car on sale? (laughs) Yeah. It's one of them. It's up there. I actually, by the way, I don't think it's a bad car, but it might be the ugliest. Whoa, that front. The Civic Type R. Civic Type R is the ugliest car on sale. Then this. That's that's a bold statement. Johnny Lieberman would punch you in the face if you were here with him. It's a good car, but it has six wings and nine exhaust pipes. It's very, it looks like Shredder's helmet. Yeah, they're screwing around. Come on. It's a joke. But downforce, bro. (laughs) <laughs> yep. <laughs> and they well, had you some know what reason might... why it has three exhaust pipes and they had oh was a... well no what happened was they just they wanted the car to look a certain way and yeah. then they came up with engineering things to you know to make it oh we needed this because well no you wanted it to look cool that's funny the you know what you haven't experienced yet is i don't think is the virtue of an appliance car like i had a volt for two years and it was one of my favorite cars I've ever had. It was I, so I still, great. I still tell people the best luxury car in the world is one that you don't have to think about. Yeah, care about. it was great. Dude. Yeah, it was so fucking nice. How are you? Uh, how are you digging your GT? It's amazing, isn't it's, it? Nice. It's very special. I, I, it's one of the best driving I, cars I, ever made. I truly believe that. I, I believe. Here's one. Here's a topic. I believe that it's the best American car ever made. I think that's probably accurate. I can't think of a. Better. I mean, what else? Split would window even be Corvette considered? is an incredible car. You ever drive one? No, and I <laughs> imagine, yeah, but it's that's a beautiful. real don't meet your that's heroes one car. Of the, really? They drive like garbage. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a truck. But that it's car terrible. is one of the most beautiful cars ever made. That, yeah. that split window. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't know. You, I actually like the 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 next the C three Corvette, the or like a sixty nine Corvette. I like as well hmm. with the with the buttresses in the back. That's, I mean, just in terms of how it looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks only. Looks Absolutely. only. Those yeah. were real. C threes. If you didn't, the driving experience aside, it oh, was such a cool looking car. It looked car. great. Yeah, <laughs> which it, it had great. to because the driving experience was that good. And they knew it. Oh. Did have much power. Yeah, but um, no, the, the GT is the the best built, best driving. I you know I drive a lot of cars and. Um, I I tell people I didn't choose this car by accident. It's yeah. not a coincidence I ended up with this car. Um, I bought it because I really, truly believe... I also believe deeply that it is the cheapest icon you can buy. Like, the cheapest iconic mm. car. Because <clears throat> you think about what's an icon. F40, Carrera yeah, yeah. GT. Countach. Countach. But none of that stuff is... 230, 225. That's true. Yeah. You could get a really terrible Countach. Do you think you can? Are there still Countaches that are if, that ratty you that you want can an get anniver- a- If you want an anniversary with a lot of miles and that needs a major service. Am I the yeah. only one who loves how the anniversary looks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pagani styled that. I know. It's not his best work. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so emblematic of what that car was it really you know it was really a product of its time i i recall when i was younger thinking it looked yeah, amazing right right but it to me and i'm not one of those cranky guys going the earliest version of every car is the best version <laughs> right but i just think mine's a qv so yeah. it's got the flares in the wing yeah but no bumpers and no skirts I think they just really could have stopped there, and yeah. that would have been just fine. So why do you, they did the anniversary presumably because they wanted to modernize it one more time, to facelift it one more yeah. time, to make it relevant again? Because yeah, by then the car was so old, right? Yeah, it was because it came out seventy four, yeah, right? So the the anniversary went all the way to what ninety? Eighty nine, ninety is the anniversary. <laughs> That's an old That's a production car. Run. That is almost as long as the Jaguar XJS production run. That is <laughs> on near is that, that level. Wait, is the SJS longer? I am filming an XJS tomorrow, so I looked it up. XJS went from 75 to 96. Whoa! <laughs> I didn't realize it was quite that long. My dad had an 84. He had it for a year, and I was I was only three, so I don't really remember much of it. But he says that of the year he had it, it spent seven and a half months in the shop. Yeah, the dude I'm... What year is the one you're filming? 86, I think. Okay. And he he told me he's got two inches of maintenance records. The car's only got 29,000 miles on it. But he said, he told me, he's like, he's he's like, I'm 35, I'm single, I don't have kids. He's like, but I wanted this car. (laughs) And and he's like, this is what I wanted, so I got it. And like, yeah, it's kind of a handful, but like I knew what I was getting into and I love it. And they're cool. They're special. But you know, every time I see a really nice one go by, 
I go, man, that's pretty. Right. Every time. No, it's no E-Type, though. Because that's no. the hard thing about that car. It replaced the E-Type. But how do you replace the E-Type? Right? Yeah. Like, that's the perfect car. Yeah. The e Have you driven an E-Type? I've never They're driven. They're spectacular. You, re you really... Not the V12. The V12 is no yeah. good. Because you by want then, the four They elongated two. the body and yeah. it was weird. Like th there was a really nice one at the the silver bring one. A trailer thing. The yeah. silver one was oh. great. Yeah, that was fun this morning. That bring a trailer thing. There was some weird yeah. shit out there. Yeah, dude. Oh man, a guy showed up in a Mazda 323 GTX. I saw that one. It was a really nice Subaru SVX. I like the weird stuff. There's if it was up to me, my channel would only be weird 80s and 90s. You know, what's actually interesting about your channel is you seem to be able to pull traffic on cars that I was never able to Premier. get anybody interested yeah. in. Why? What is that? I don't that? know. And you know what the problem is? That's true, but it's it's total hit or miss. Like, I, I did know, I did a right? Previa and got 2 million views. That's so then, fucking crazy, right, crazy. Dude. So then I did a... Well, it's because I'm buying views, apparently. So then yeah. I did a 90... <laughs> I did a 1990 DSM, like a first-gen DSM, totally mint. And I was like, this thing's going to blow up. Nobody watched it. They're shit boxes, huh? I thought it was cool. You could throw it was around. Was it a Talon or was it a... It was an Eclipse. Was now, the problem with those is they're tremendously unreliable. I'm told yeah. they were like really, really bad. Yeah. But I part of me wonders if it's only unreliable because so many people try to get 600 wheel horsepower that out too. of them. Well, I, when, I, when I filmed one, I thought it was such a boring car that I made a, a fake drug commercial out of it. <laughs> we, made a, we made a prescription drug commercial where the drug was called Eclipse. So it was like I was depressed, and then I found Eclipse, and I you didn't like this thing. What which which was yours a first gen the one that you drove? Yeah, it was like a ninety three maybe. Right. Yeah, yes, it was a first gen. Yeah. yeah, and the dude Tony who owned it, shout out to Tony. He was he was cool as fuck, and the car was honestly like as nice as an Eclipse. It was like four hundred horsepower. Like yeah. it was as nice as you're gonna find anywhere. Yeah, but I hated it. <laughs> I, I liked it. I thought it was like tossable and fun. But to answer your question, I don't know. So then I did an E38 7 Series, yeah. and that also did 2 million views. But I, but I never know. So like I have to tread very lightly in the world of 80s and 90s cars because sometimes it's going to just totally die. Yeah. And I can't assume it's going to do well. So even if it's a car, like I showed up at the guy's house who had the E38, and like me and him talked for like an hour, we're like geeked out over Those this thing. Those are really great cars. Amazing man. cars. But really, like, especially the short wheelbase with the with the Bond wheels. The short wheelbase and oh, the, fucking fire, dude. Those I, are great. I did a long wheelbase because that was the only way you could get the V12 in uh, the US. Oh, was it a 750? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, they sold a short wheelbase 750 overseas, but not here. Didn't but they um, sell it with a manual, or did you could you only I get think the, the six? The manual was only on the e in the states, anyway. It was only on the previous body, which was the E32. Right. I don't. I they may have sold a I manual. Think there was a manual in E38 Europe. in Europe. Yeah, but I don't, but it was definitely not a 12. It might have been the eight, possibly even the six yeah, over there, or like yeah. a diesel or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah because the transporter was a was a manual. The yeah. transported one was a manual. Yeah. Oh, fucking knows. It might have bullshitted that one. <laughs> yeah, like in the like in the Jurassic Park Lost World ML three twenty when he's shifting gears and it's like oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which, by the way, is the greatest movie car of all time. Just FYI. Lost World ML. You know Jeff Goldblum still drives yeah, one. I, I saw, I saw that, that on Top Gear. Um. Um. ML three twenty is one of my all time favorite cars. I would love to get one of those. Ninety eight. Really? ML320, yeah. You can get one to film or actually no, buy one. Purchase one. Yeah. Why? Because, dude, that car started the revolution. The luxury SUV, the like well, suburb dweller luxury SUV began with that car. Is that before the RX? One year. Okay. Our memo came out in 98, RX came out in 99. Okay. My mom was, you know, my, I'm sure I told you, my mom was the queen of the RX. Yes, my that's mom, right. She has two identical she ones. She has two now. <laughs> At one point, I think in 20... Uh, 11 or 12 she had five at once <laughs> first gens yeah uh why? no one one second gen and four first gen why because they wouldn't break and so they weren't worth anything and yeah. they wouldn't break yeah and so we have a vacation home In so two of them ended yeah. up there right because you need and two. then my my little sister drove one and then my housekeeper she gave one <laughs> or their housekeeper she gave one and then she had one <laughs> and then lexus put the uh the mouse when Lexus uh, went to the mouse, touch, yeah, they, they lost her. Yeah, what does they, she drive it now? She, now she drives Audis. Now she's on her second Q5. Um, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Le yeah. Lexus lost, lost my dad. He went to a Lincoln MKC. Yeah. For the for the same type for of the reason. same reason. Not the not the mouse, but it was that and the styling. Yeah. My mom was was like, "What are they? What yeah. Are what they is this? The styling? <laughs> what the hell is this thing? Yeah. Meanwhile, I had the GSF last week, and it's rad. Yeah, but. It's eighty grand. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you know the move is to buy a two-year-old off-lease one for fifty, and it's the greatest car in the world. That car is cool and whatever, but like, how do you charge M five money and have? It's not M five money. M fives are a lot more expensive. Yeah, than well think. now M5s they are. are 120 now grand, they are. Bro. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get my point. The car, the car is eighty. What eighty ninety? It's ridiculous. Yeah. What is the base price of a GSM? 
It's insane uh, money for 460 horsepower. Yeah, 83. But that motor is a sweetheart of a motor. It is. It's a really, that's a great, great engine. I mean, even if it's, quote, only 460 horsepower, but that's a great engine. it is only 460 horsepower. Right? If I'm spending that kind of money, I want to get, I want to really blow the doors off it. Yeah, but you know what? I think if it had 100 more horsepower and it was twin turboed, I think it would be worse. No, there's, no be worse. there's never been a car in history that had 100 more horsepower and was twin turboed and was worse. DB11. You like the V8 DB11 better? Uh, I haven't driven the V8 DB11, but I prefer the naturally aspirated V12 to the twin turbo one. Interesting. To how it delivers power. Yeah. I don't think the trade-off is worth it for that car. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's a, it's an, you, your point, because it's a not intended to be like a high, like a super car. I think, the, I think the sound is affected negatively. I think it's got small turbos. So you get that real big 2,500 RPM shove and then it sort of dies the top. You don't get the revy nature of it, but you know, it's just my, my taste. But I, I, I could make an argument that there have been some things that were worse. Yeah, you get my point, though. I know. I know Car, what you mean. It's nice to have more power. It's it's very hard to argue against 100 horsepower. I just, that car also, I, I haven't actually driven a GSF. I've driven the RCF. That car also mm-hmm. is dulled like crazy by the transmission. The transmission to me in the RCF was like really, really killed the, the uh, whole experience. Yeah, I want, give me I, dual clutch. I mean, you've got to be dual clutch. Yeah. What is the Aventador doing with a, with a single clutch? Well... <laughs> <laughs> running low on resources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so, but I mean, come on. Bugatti. It's emotion. Uh, it's ridiculous. No, I know. It's a slow gearbox, especially for $600,000. It's a slow gearbox. Yeah. Right. Totally. totally. I agree that with you. That was my only great. I, I agree dr- with you. I drove super the Wyra. Cars, yeah, super and Wyra as well. I drove the Wyra lately. That was the only thing that I didn't like about mm-hmm. that car. Surprisingly mm-hmm. slow shifting. Yeah. I, you know, you want, if you think that's slow, <laughs> you should get in a Corvette. <laughs> Get an automatic Corvette if you want to be disappointed. What, from that era? No, no. A current one. <laughs> if you want to be disappointed with a gearbox, yeah, but get in a, get, or so, a ZR1. So when does dual clutch make its way into cars like that? See, I think that the, the problem right now with dual clutch is a dual clutch that can hold 700 horsepower is really expensive. Is that the problem? That it's just too expensive for like Chevy to put? Like, so like, Way too expensive for Chevy, probably too expensive for Pagani. Like, yeah, I like, can see that, especially because like they the use Veyrons that existing and motor. The Chirons, yeah, that's an in-house, right? Gearbox. And they have infinite money, and Pagani yeah. doesn't. Plus, Pagani used someone else's motor, so maybe they couldn't link up. Uh, yeah. It was easier. Yeah, I mean, they claim they did it because a dual clutch would have been heavier and blah blah blah. But like, yeah. Now, even a, even like McLarens, like I know a company that tunes McLarens, and McLaren uses the Graziano dual clutch, same as the Ferraris, right? Same as the mid end, the four five eight and the four eight eight, four five eight, four eight eight, and all the McLarens have the same gearbox. It's just the tuning that's different. Um, to go when they modify these McLarens for like a thousand horsepower, they have to completely rebuild the gearbox with all this stronger shit. Yeah. And it's like yeah. crazy. That was expensive. The biggest, for years that was the biggest problem with dual clutch generally. They couldn't even they Porsche couldn't hold, hold figure out how to yes. get it in. Correct. But finally it's starting to develop. But only in yeah, only in really high expensive right. cars. Nine eleven right. turbo, R eight V ten. Correct. Correct. But he, and even even then it's like there's a limit, you know. They're they're pushing six hundred. They're not pushing seven eight hundred, and they're not pushing eight seven hundred and fifty pounds of torque. Yeah, that's really even yeah, the yeah, yeah. the right. McLarens and right. stuff are torque limited by gear. You know what I mean? So Interesting. yeah, so and that the makes Porsches sense. as well. That makes um, sense. It's a reliability issue mostly. Yeah, I drove the Chiron. Yeah, you, you what did you think? You've driven one of those? I have not. What did you think? It's pretty fast. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hear they're fast. <laughs> 1,500 horsepower or something? Yeah, yeah. Did you get to unleash it? Several Where did you times. drive it? I, in Toronto. Interesting. And I, But I drew, we drove way out into the country. Yeah. But in, in Ontario, you may notice the speeding laws are crazy, and they'll they'll like kill I, you on site I've, if you're yeah, going I've more than three miles Yeah, I've heard they'll fuck you up, right. But uh, nonetheless, um, I really got on it, and it's fast. It's not a slow automobile. It, uh, it Was holds. it fun? Yeah, yeah. Because the Veyron I drove... And it was fast, but it wasn't as fun to me as the price point indicated. They told it me that their be. theory was they wanted a car. They didn't want like a track car. Yeah, they wanted like a, you know, it drives like a Bentley, but also is as fast as a Koenigsegg or whatever. And that's kind of that was what they were going for. So in, the in, intent wasn't necessarily for fun, but more like the ability to have like the greatest luxury car and the fastest crazy car. Yeah, and they did that. But it's still it's kind of small. Exciting. For luxury cars, they're small. Yeah, you know, they're, they, they're pretty I small. And they I drive didn't fit pretty so small. well in the Veyron. Um, yeah, it was it was a little uncomfortable for me actually. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, for a luxury car, like uh, not compared to the Countach. Right, right, right. Countach, yeah. I have to take my so shoes off. So what's the story with the Countach? You get this thing back from a a repairer. So I bought it in the middle of a service. Okay, a service I don't have to pay for. Okay, which is excellent. So you haven't driven it. 
I I did drive it for a video four years ages ago. ago. But you haven't. So you've made this purchase. <laughs> I drove the, this car. This is yeah, the same yeah, car. But nonetheless, yeah. I mean, you know, you can do a lot to a car in four years. You know. Yeah, but not the, the no. cars. The cars driven gone three hundred miles since. Right, I right. It. But you okay. So, but the point is, you paid for it. It's at the shop. It's at GTO Engineering. And you're I get getting it, on it back Wednesday. this week. Yes, I'm yeah, very, are you just very thrilled. Excited. Are you? I'm very, so excited. What are you gonna do? Dude. You're gonna drive this thing twice and then be like, "This is the worst car in the world." You know, have you ever driven one? Yeah, and I love it. I think it's but, great. I don't think it's the worst car in the world. No. I think they drive really nice. But don't you think? Actually, you know, a couple of weeks, you're gonna be like, "Man, this is a chore." <laughs> um. Well, look, I, I've got more than one car. Right. I'm not forced to drive it ever. I, right. I, in a few months, I'm gonna have a giant storage facility that I can that it can sit for eight months a year if I don't want if I don't want to drive. I'm you know? surprised how good of a driving car it is. When it you're moving, suck. It when you're moving, drives lovely. It's yeah. got great steering. It's got great brakes. It actually feels light, unlike all and other. And front visibility is good. Yeah. It's, it's fine. It's the other stuff that's a challenge. Yeah, and and you know, it's for me, it's a poster car. Yeah. But more importantly, it's it, it is an investment. Like it, you know, I, I it, it's not the car I expect to be driving most of the time. But an opportunity came up to buy it from it's and it's the right color combo. It has the right history. It, it has is this, the right color combo. Yeah, that it, is another one of the cheapest icon cars. Yeah, because because even though it's incredibly expensive, like when I think about cars that are like iconic. I think about cars that are now. I mean, F forty is a million five now, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of F forties. There's, there's twelve hundred F forties. Dude, there's, there's twelve hundred F forties. There's only six hundred and seven Countach QVs. Yeah, there's there. How, we looked this up. How many how many Testarossas were there? Yeah. Like seventy five hundred, dude. And I don't even consider there's that car to seven be like an icon. times the number of yeah. Testarossas that there are to get Countach's. a car Countach. I mean, that's. <laughs> Dude, it's one of the all time. It doesn't even matter how it drives. It's one of the all time most, in, most special, insane. The fact that they ever built it, they'll never do anything like it again. No. Now, now that Audi's there and Hell no. the cars, the Lambos are still cool, but that was that <laughs> it's was so absurd. This car a, in all the right ways. It's yeah. so absurd. It's just to go in the garage and mm -hmm. just see it yeah. there yeah. is going to be so special. Dude, I remember when, when I lived in Atlanta, there was a dude who would drive one. And yeah. you see, you'd see it sometimes. Yeah. Seeing that on the road, <laughs> it, it, yeah. low and wide and flat. It dude, it's so shocking. Cool. Even in LA, like in LA, there's Huracans yeah. all over the place. There's like, I see a dozen Ferraris a day here of all yeah. makes and models. Like, uh, an exotic car is not a particularly big deal totally. in LA, but if you see a Countach, yeah. it's holy shit. You know what I Countach mean? Countach is one of the flip out cars. Countach is one yeah. of the ones that even today, yeah. after I've driven the Chiron River, I would still make a U-turn and be like, I got to get a picture of this, yeah, my friends. Totally. Yeah. And and so I would not have gone out shopping for one and I wouldn't have gone to all the auctions and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But like this one fell into my lap. I had the money. I wanted to roll the dice. I got it. I got it for what I think is a very good price. Yeah. And um, you know, it's the right car with the right history, and it's the right time for me to to fucking go hard. Let's go hard. Let's go in. Let's do it. And you know? yeah, the investment aspect you can't deny anymore. Like all these cars. Yeah. The GT too. I don't think the GT is going to go up, but like you can't deny that like when you're spending a certain amount of money, you need it to retain value. Right. Or potentially increase. Right. You need to protect yourself if totally. you're us. I mean, some people are in different situations. And look, and don't have to care. it may go up a little. It may go down a little. It may go up a lot, but there's a fixed number of them. Yep. And they could get crashed. There yep. could be less. Yeah. The but number isn't fixed. If anything, it's it could be. It could be less. Declining. But yeah. there will never, be, never be, more. be more. Yep. And. Except you know? maybe they'll make more. Now, you, well, let's talk about this 993. Oh, my God. You see the Project Gold? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. This thing. So Porsche built one more. <laughs> so what did they have? Spares? or did they, they, I, the, the goal was to show what their heritage center can do, right? right? That they have so many spare parts. So Porsche has decided that they are going to, I don't know, restore modern cars. Right. Apparently they're doing they're restoring first gen boxsters now. I just saw <laughs> they restored a Carrera GT. It's this like, is, bro, this yeah, car's ten GT. years old. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Um. So th this this we have a picture of it. This is a nine nine three Turbo S uh, that they built from parts this year. Yeah. It is not street legal. It's not street legal. Nope. Oh, because it only conforms to the safety standards of nineteen ninety eight. But it's, because, <laughs> but it's okay. brand new. Got it. Okay. Built by a manufacturer, so it's not street legal. That doesn't mean somebody wouldn't easily buy another fucking beater 993 Turbo and swap the VINs. Right. Or the which, plates, at least, yeah, which you yeah. do, which you would the do. The Land Rover community would be into. So, right. but, so this sold for <laughs> three, three, 3.1 million plus three, buyer's premium. <laughs> plus premium. Yes, yeah, 3.6 so million. So this sold for 3.6 million. <laughs> now, 3.6 million, that buys you a lot of stuff. It buys you 
10 nearly mint condition 993 turbos. And and 10 nearly mint condition 993 turbo S's. I mean, you can get a 993 turbo S for... A 993 turbo S is like 350. Yeah. Grand. Yeah. A so great one. Yeah. So <laughs> that's... That, I mean, that's that's... Now it was for charity, I think. Oh, so there, so that you know, so I can tell so you, not a, oh yeah, it was for charity. It was right. for Portion charity. Was donating the money. So that means someone got a tax deduction. So it's hard to do the a char- very big tax. Nonetheless, deduction. someone paid three point six million dollars for uh-huh. a nine nine for a nine nine three, which turbo. strikes me as a strong figure. I would spend fifty for a nice one, <laughs> right? I mean, I, for a turbo, about, I'd spend eighty. Maybe the thing about the nine nine three is that. They made a lot of those 993 turbos. A 993 turbo is not a great collector car. There is a they 993 made a bunch turbo on Bring a Trailer at any given moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what time of day or year. Is this or correct? Is this, Jalopnik says it's 427,000 hours of labor <laughs> in this car. Are you that's serious? It, if that's what this says. 205 full-time plays for a year. For a year. Oh, my God. Now, you commented on, on Twitter today. You had an opinion about this. Well, there's too many rich people. There's too many rich people. I, I, I think there are. I think, I think. Well, the 2018 is the best year on record for billionaires. Can I tell billionaires you made the most money ever in 2018? One interesting thing has happened in the world of cars in the last 10 years, which is that there is now a community of wealthy men. All they want to do is talk about how they optioned their Porsche. Have you encountered these people? <laughs> yeah, I run into people. Do you think I should go with the parking brake in silver and the and the and the and the, and the, par- and the stitching in green? And I yeah. didn't. And I don't want to talk about that stuff. I don't give a and, shit. But man, there are people who, if you go on Renlist, well, all the difference- that people want to talk about now yeah. is not how driving the car. They want to talk about how to equip guys. Do you think I should get the in the color? Yeah. And I'm like, Shut I go. You know, I I don't talk about that with people, but I do <laughs> hear them talk about like you know I have an '87 Carrera that we did a safari thing, and but but other people go well. My 87 Carrera has the leather vents and the paint to sample tachometer. And that can be the <laughs> difference. Sample tachometer. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff people But that say. can be the difference between a $40,000 car and a $70,000 car. Only because there is this market of people who are now absolutely obsessed with distinguishing themselves from yeah. other wealthy people because yeah. apparently there's so many. I mean, GT3, this has now become such a big thing. Can I get a paint to sample one? Did you know that 40% of 911s sold in 2018 were GT cars? 40%? No way. Yeah. 40% are GT cars. The GT3 ain't rare anymore, homie. Special. That's the most sold one. Holy. That's <laughs> yeah. insane. You know what's going to be rare? The Carrera T. The Carrera, Carrera T. T will be rare. You know what's going to be super rare? I, I realized the other day. A base. GT3 with PDK. GT3.2 oh, with yeah, PDK. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is ordering stick because they're like, oh, the stick is back and you make money if you get a stick. Well, yeah. now everybody got a stick. I get emails every day from someone in 991.2 GT3 PDK. Yeah. It's manual. And PDK is the rare one. Yeah. But I just, it's unbelievable to me. Yeah, 40% were 40% GT. 40% are GT. Guys. And every one of those people, can I get paint to sample? Can yeah. I get the parking break in? And Viper Green. <laughs> I just, it's just, it's gone too far for they me. Are I nice. just want to They're drive. lovely cars to drive. They're incredible yeah. to drive. The GT3 to this day remains, yeah. and any of them, 996. The GT3, I think, is the most well rounded sports car that money can buy. Totally. I, I agree. Yeah. But I just can't have any more conversations about leather air. <laughs> about how you I just spec. can't do it. I don't care how it's spec. A friend of mine bought an RS and has the, has, it's, uh, it's chalk and has the chalk uh, air vents. Really? That, yeah, yeah. that would that, be cool. It's kind of cool, actually. But I just... It's chalk with gold that, wheels and That kind of stuff would be cool. But man, you know, people are spending so much time thinking about every little detail. Yeah. And I just can't... Yeah. Can't well, be part bespoke of that. is the thing, right? That's the thing. And, there, and truly, I think the thing is there are so many people who have money that these that some people with money want to distinguish themselves from yeah. other people with money. Oh, he's got a GT3, but he's just got guards red yeah, with yeah. a black interior. Oh. Yeah. It used to be just having a GT3 was baller. Now you have to have a certain specific things that, oh, I know a guy in Porsche exclusive who got me a thing. It's access, right? Yeah. Uh, you got to have that access. You got to have the in. You got to be You got to be more special. Well, you know, I just drive around my old Ford, my old truck. Right? And, uh, my old fucking Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to some super chat questions? Ooh. We got a bunch. How do, these, how do these go? What do we, we do? We just go in order. We'll just answer questions. Okay. I, um, I'm going to try to get to all of them. If you guys oh, wanna, wow. All of them? Okay. Yeah, we're going to try and get to all, all of them. Right, let's do this. If you guys want to uh, ask Doug anything while we're doing the live show, get in now. So these are, this is money coming in? I mean, why, it is, why yeah. am I not doing this? I don't know. You should be. <laughs> <laughs> you really should be. Well, that's what we've learned uh, today. 
Oh, Charlie says Doug is the type of guy to pay taxes on his three hundred thousand. That is right. You see the Georgia crackdown on I Montana. Saw yeah, dude. Well, Montana is so you don't even have to have a house there. I actually have a Montana LLC. I did this once. Really? For, for because of inspection in Pennsylvania for oh, my skyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, not anymore. Yeah, I don't mind if you get an if you get an out of state to avoid inspection. I actually don't either. I think it's totally. I'm like totally chill. People who do it to avoid smog because yeah. especially if you drive the car 500 miles a year, what it's like what? It's so stupid. It's cleaner to have an old car you drive 500 yeah. miles a year than a brand new Prius that, you drive 20. That doesn't bug me at all, and I don't judge people who do that. But like, mm. I see a guy driving around in night. Oh, God, in my neighborhood the other day, I saw a guy in a brand new six series with Montana plates. I'm like, come, come on. You on. can't put a sales tax on your you six series. You, you can't afford that car, dude. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but the Instagram bros that do it and then show their plates all over the place. Hey, man, every day I drive around. I was in front of a cop yesterday yeah. in my GT. Every day I drive around with my California plate. I feel pretty well, good. In LA, I drive around with no plates. Yeah. My SL, That's going to change. You know, they're, my they're SL finally going gonna... to. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> when the cops run out of shit to do, it'll change. Until then, it doesn't matter what the law is. <laughs> fucking, I've had. My car's registered. I'm not driving around an unregistered so car. Put plates on it. What the hell's wrong with you? Occasionally. I what like to. What do you you like to do? What your SL? What do you do with that thing? You don't go four hundred miles an hour. What are you doing I, that thing? I go down the seventy three. Oh, for <laughs> tolls? Are you saying for you? You don't put plates on to save what eight bucks? Yeah. Do you know what I mean to give you eight dollars here cash today right now? You can go down the seventy three. <laughs> out of your mind. No, actually, no. At this point, it's it's not. A, it's a game. At this point, it's just a game. It's just because you just want to screw you. California has taken so much from I you. I don't do you, anything illegal. I don't speed in the car. I have a, I have, look, I have a fucking fast track. I pay my tolls. Okay. <laughs> and it's not to run tolls. I just, <laughs> I, I started as a joke and you want to see how far you can go. Yes. Cause you know, you know, there's people who drive around for years. Hannah is about to return her Volvo lease three years. <laughs> no plates. Three fucking years, dude. It's crazy. No tags. And just, I only want to do it. Just to just as a story, just as a thing. How long can I actually get away? Yeah. It would be easier if that was a newer car. Because on new cars, oh, yeah. they literally don't. Yeah, care. they don't give a fuck. And Hannah's car, like Hannah's Volvo is red. So that red looks really new if it's like even kind of clean. Yeah. So totally. And all the Volvos, all, all V60s look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. But but on a 2001 SL, that's, it's that's crazy. an accomplishment. It's, the, it's so funny. Everybody, California, the rules, they have so many rules and regulations. And yet this is the state where you can drive around with a dealer license plate insert no for tags. five years. Yep, and nobody yep. cares. Good on you for paying taxes on the GT, though. You're a good man. <laughs> Frazier, <laughs> yeah. uh, Frazier says, uh, Doug. Is an E92 M3 with 60,000 miles and a CarMax warranty a safe buy? Yes, with the warranty, but I wouldn't do any of those cars. Those car, that era kind of scary. I just filmed an E60 M5, actually. That era is a scary era of BMW. I wouldn't touch Dude, one of those without a warranty. You definitely don't want an SMG car out of warranty. Yeah, if that's Hell SMG. No. no. This would be a DCT if it's an E92, but. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But you d those V10s, bro. Mm -mm. The, I drove a stick one, but yeah, I mean, and the, stick you know, was better. They still had the rod bearing problem that torpedoed yep. the motors, and no one will write a warranty on those anymore. In fact, the fact that Carmax will still is a good thing. And yes, that is that is a safe buy. I love that E92. Are you right? blacklisted from Carmax at this point? No, but I I called the other day on a. They had a seven series V12, seven series, seven sixty, <laughs> and it was green. It was an individual car. Oh, oh, I called. It was in San Diego. I called them. And I said, well, there's a warranty on this. And they said 8300 bucks for the same warranty. I paid 3500 bucks wow. for my Range Rover. And I was uh, like, so you blew up there. Forget spot. it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Frazier. Uh, wait. So, I mean, you roll the dice on an old BMW with 60,000 miles. Yeah. The honestly. question is, how much time do you want to spend at the dealer? You, the warranty. Yeah. Carmax will. Carmack's a good warranty. The, the money, but if that's your daily driver, right. you know, what if <laughs> how, you got downtime? How long do you want to spend in a Mini Cooper with, with BMW of whatever on the back? <laughs> that's the question you asked yourself. In a three-cylinder Mini. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's so funny. Nam Kim says, uh, will you be at Radwood LA on December 2nd? I will. Will you? Can yeah, you come out? probably. Probably. You should come out. It's, the problem it's is i got to drive my Defender up if I want a 90s car, and that oh. thing is... I, I don't like to drive that out of my... I don't like to drive that past La Jolla. <laughs> it doesn't leave your gated community. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just... We could set you up It's a something. little unsafe, you know? I mean, you can come roll with us. What am I going to do? Not car. drive the Defender, though? I that's, know. That's you have to. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. I, I will be certainly with the Countach and the 911. Living the sure. dream. Yeah. And I told the guy I just sold the Mustang to, I... um. I, I got would got him a pass if he wanted, but he's taking the car to Las Vegas. That's where he lives? 
He that's where he's keeping the car. I think he bounces around because he works for an uh, air, airplane manufacturer. He makes sure to get that Nevada yeah. residency. Uh, I'll be there. Come out and say hi. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Joshua says, Doug, do you think the headache of a risky CarMax warranted car <laughs> is worth it for the average person with one? You th- you made your fucking bed. Doug. The you answer to is all these no, under no circumstances. And I and I really believe that. I I you know it worked for me because I worked from home, and every time the car broke, I was actually thrilled because I could I got more something out to of it. write about. Totally. And that yeah. that time, I remember with my wife one one month like it hasn't broken in six months there's nothing this is so annoying (laughs) did you go cut a line no (laughs) i never i never sabotaged it but like if if it was your only thing i mean i became friends with my service advisor like i have a cell like we text (laughs) i don't know that anybody wants to go down that road i wouldn't do it if it was the only car and i certainly wouldn't do it if it was like my commuter and i had it would be kind of fun maybe if you got a porsche or something and it was like a second car and you could deal with it being gone for a week here and there but i I wouldn't want to. Yeah, have I think that I think the problem with being like an inspiration to do goofy shit, like the CarMax warranty thing, is you got to understand why Doug did it. Right, he did it for the well, initially, story. I actually bought it before I ever was doing this, but it didn't. Still, I yeah. like my time wasn't that but valuable. You only at the stuck time. with it because yeah, of the story. that's exactly right. Yeah, there's no doubt. Everybody wanted to see how far this is going to go. Yeah, and I wouldn't. And now I don't have time to put up with stuff like that. Yeah, now I, I don't like either. I, I need Your like time's a, worth fucking money now. Now it is. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't do it with a daily driver for sure. No. Uh, Joe says Houston commute jumped from 10k to 20k. Uh, presumably that means miles per year. Uh, I lease a GTI. Will owe 3,300 at the end at this pace. Oh no! Buy it out and drive into the ground. Uh, well, fuck. Thirty three hundred dollars is a lot of money to write a check for at the end of a lease. I would consider buying it out early and and taking your chances. Whatever. Yeah. Could a Tesla Model Three handle twenty thousand miles a year? Yeah. I don't see why not. As long as you don't crash it, you'll be down for eight months. <laughs> you drove a Model 3? You did, right? I did. It's great. And I, I enjoyed totally the Model handle. 3, yeah. actually. I, I thought mean, it was a nice not, car. It's not like a performance car, but it's it's fine. Like it's, As an appliance? As a vehicle a to use. Like, I, I would even consider... I mean, not personally. I'm not like that into Tesla, but I would consider getting one if I was in this circumstance where I was yeah, commuting. Yeah. I do think it could handle 20 a year. However, $3,300 is a big check to write for a car that you're giving that up. That you're giving back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I would definitely try and buy the lease out and roll your dice with selling it yourself. Um, best 20,000 mile a year commuter car for under $50,000. Easy. The answer is anything with adaptive cruise control that goes down to zero because you just sit there. Totally. It is so What's the cheapest nice. car you can get with That's that? That's a good question, especially the adaptive cruise that will actually do bumper to bumper because they Ooh. won't all. But I don't know. I, I don't know if like a nice, like a, you can get an MKZ I think an a, for like 18. Audi, an Audi A4 will have it. Totally. Yeah, and that, an A4 like will The thing about commuting it. 20K a year, especially in Houston, there's a lot of traffic. That's a, I'd rather, a big thing. I'd rather not have to work pedals and stuff totally. and, and save my money and get something, save the 50, get something for whatever an A4 is, lease an A4. I think that's almost 50. God. Houston Especially traffic, the adaptive cruise. Houston traffic, shitty. Yeah. It's a really bad place to sit in traffic. If you're sitting, get that and then just take your I money agree. and get, get something. I'm with you on that. Thanks, Make Joe. Fun. David says, looking at buying a mid-90s oh, nice. E-Class Cabriolet. You see that one I today? Like the, the black one was yeah. very clean. Thoughts on mid-90s maintenance and reliability. Will it hold its value? Well, the 124 is famous for its uh, its how sturdy it is, that yeah. chassis. Um, nonetheless, I've heard some of my friends have got them, and they said they weren't the best. Chris Harris owns one and said it's a money pit. Yeah. My friend Chef Sang Yoon owns one and says it's great. If you, It's a 22-year-old car at this right. point. It's not going to be incredibly reliable. It will definitely hold its value. If anything, it's going to go up. That E320, that 124 E320 cab is, is definitely climbing. Um, Here's the wild card for me, the convertible top. The convertible oh, top God, is a wild card. It's the last thing you want to do. Yeah, and there's no hard top option like the SL. SL like yeah. my SL, if the convertible top were to take a shit, you just leave I it could down. at least leave it down and yeah. put the hard top on it, and that would get me by yeah. until I could save enough to fix it. Because these e-cabs, they're coming up in value, but they're still not worth enough. Where Because what's a top? It's probably like six grand or something. At insane. least. Yeah. yeah, tops are really expensive. The top mechanisms are really expensive. Yeah. And they're really well made for 94 yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah they're they're fairly simple there's not a ton of electronics the six cylinder is pretty stout yeah well, here's where you're gonna get it, find and run into problems trim pieces yeah interior trim pieces and stuff Although like a that. lot of the 300 e's the sedans a they lot of them were junk so they should, should be fairly easy yeah. I mean, I, there's some differences but uh, it'll definitely hold its value but i would only get it if i wasn't driving it a ton yeah so i have a 129 sl um, with that i really like it's my traffic car and it's it is it's stout it's it works it's not it's never been a problem but uh it's about 
twelve hundred a year to fifteen hundred a year in maintenance. That's about what it is. Some of the fluids. How, how many miles are you driving a year in that? Three thousand. Not a lot. So that's a lot of money to spend yeah. for not a lot of miles. Yeah. So the fluids are super expensive for it. Use expensive oil. Use expensive trans and diff fluid. Interesting. Yeah. The fluids are expensive. If you know that going in, then I guess it could be fine. And I had one plastic part that was like the housing that goes around the air conditioning compressor. It was eleven hundred bucks. Yeah. So that's just like shit. That's like yeah. yeah, it works. You know what I mean? The engine's fine. The gearbox is fine. But these but are like, old cars. They're, old they're cars. getting to be old, and they're even old though cars, they were yeah. solidly built at the time, twenty-five totally, year old car. Totally. Yeah. So if you're gonna buy an old car, make sure the driving experience is, is yeah worth is what it. you want. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. And probably don't drive it all that much. Yeah. But they are they are lovely. They're very pretty. Uh. D- Denver Good 07. Denver God. Whatever that says. 25K for a nice, fun sports car with a good automatic transmission. Mm. He then suggests a 911 or 986 no, boxer, that, both of which have terrible automatic, automatic transmission. Yeah, that was a bad. Tiptronic was a tough Tiptronic era. Tiptronic was not good. Uh, You're looking at GTIs? First off, get a manual if you can. Second, yeah, uh, yeah GTI. GTI with the dual clutch. Even a BRZ FRS. They're That's okay. actually a pretty decent automatic. Yeah, I, I've never driven on one. I have, and the paddles are surprisingly good and responsive. It's actually, as far as automatics go, that is a good one. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And those are fun cars with anything. Yeah. And what, uh, what other Evo, an Evo 10 with a dual clutch. With the Mitsubishi dual clutch, the, trying to know. get those things started. Nice, fun. GTI is a great suggestion because yeah. you can get a fairly modern one with a dual clutch, and it's a ton of that fun. That almost gets you, a, that might even get you in a brand new one. 15? 25,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a yeah. brand new one. Yeah. Yeah, or, I would, or damn close CPO for sure. Yeah, I would start with the GTI. You might actually, you're you might want to look for the CarMax warranty, but a CLA forty five yeah, or totally. a GLA forty five. I don't think those are twenty five yet. They're under thirty, but they drop like rocks. I love that car so much. The GLA I prefer. To really? The CLA. Yeah, because it's got more um, suspension travel. It's more like a rally car. It looks weird. Though. It does look weird, especially with the stupid canards. Yeah, that's the problem. The forty five at the the wing and the big wheels. Yeah. And the, I love how they drive. I think that forty five motor is fantastic. The forty five motor is good. Yeah, I would look at the. You might be able to get into one of those for twenty five. That would be awesome. Yeah, not with <laughs> the warranty. Uh, thank you, sir. Thunder Clutch, great username. Our SLR McLarens a strong buy and hold. Uh, considering its counterparts from the quote Trinity era, the Enzo and Carrera GT to continue to climb about. You driven an SLR McLaren? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking hate those things. I think they're terrible. <laughs> I don't like how they drive at all. And that is why they are worth one third of what Carrera GT <laughs> yeah. is worth and one tenth of what Enzo is worth. With that said, it was a special car. It was a special car. The doors go up. It's striking to look at. And it was that holy that trinity of cars, low production value numbers. Yeah. With that said, I don't do they think buy they drive hold? good. I just don't think they drive good. You know, I I'm gonna name drop Jay Leno here. I I yeah. Leno's got one and I, I did a film, you know, a segment with his show. He told me that the one thing about that car is you can go really fast. And he's like, it's not supposed to be a handling car. It's not supposed to. But on the Autobahn, he's like, I have a buddy. Jay, he's like, I got a buddy who does uh, these uh, these uh, like runway things where uh-huh. you, you pay to go a certain speed. He's like, it's the only car I can get up to 200. That's what his friend told me. The only yeah. car I can reliably get up to 200 every time. Are they a buy and hold? I don't know. That market is unusual. They dropped, but then they started to come back up they, for they some reason. They started to come back up. And I don't I know just, why. I look at them every so often like, can I get one of these for one something? The answer is always no. That nah. surprises me because it probably should be one something. The SLS is a much better car. Way better car. Yeah. Especially the SLS GT, with which has the, the, the yeah, updates. Yeah, yeah. The GT was way better. But it was the SLR. I mean, if I, when I see them on the street, which is never, I flip. I mean, that car Do was... Really? Oh, that car was so cool. That long hood is... <laughs> They were cool. It's Is a great it a buy motor. And hold? Great it, motor. I don't know that I would buy one with the intent of having it try to appreciate it in value. And I certainly wouldn't buy one with the intent of trying to drive it and enjoy it. It's yeah. Not, for two, you're, you're, there's a lot of better things GT. you can buy. I would get GT for, in two GT seconds. Is a way over. better car. Yeah. Way better car. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Gearhead704. I'm so upset. I didn't big more <laughs> from your Fox body. I'm sorry, sir. It went to a good home. How do I recover? Looks like you have a Fox body in your uh, profile here. Let's start, start with driving it. That or one. you could donate some money to an animal shelter. That five spot he went for big money. It did. Charity. It's it was a charity angle. You know, I'm I'm super super happy with the result. Sixty five is a ton of money for a Fox body, and that I was had a cool car though. I had about thirty into it oh. of my money. So you did fine because you donated. I got out. Of, I got out of it for even money because I donate the other half to the charity. It would take fifty to recreate it. It would, assuming you paid people to do the things that I paid people to do. That is the that car looked so. Oh, hard. it really it was a painting in the back of the studio. I it, you got any regrets giving it up? No, um, because I 
I just didn't drive it that much. And in, in LA parking and space and money are valuable resources that I, yeah. uh, at this, it's exactly the car I wanted four years ago. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. I want different things, but the project of it, the build, I, I'm the the way it turned out, the aesthetic of it, the look, the sound is exactly what I was going for. I'm glad that like a vision could turn into that. Yeah, yeah. And it got you know it got a lot of media coverage. Because truly, it. that probably the coolest Fox Body ever. Real cool. Car. I, I like Fox Body. I think they're all cool, but that one was that cool. one because you drove it the last time we cool. podcasted. You drove it to the thing. And it was, that was a cool car. It's particularly cool. It had the right stance. It really looked the, looked the fucking business. But I'm really happy the new owners stoked on it. That's yeah. cool. Mark says, uh, "Where do you see BMW i8 values going over the next few years? Have they dropped enough to buy one without losing my shirt, or are they cool to, cool enough to justify a We're loss?" We're going to differ on this topic. I have no doubt. You, you probably think it's crappy. I've actually never driven. One. Oh, really? No, I'm, I'm. What do you think of them, though? I generally, you know, I think they look neat. Yeah. Um. I I sat in one, and I feel like I really like the use of carbon fiber. I really like the design element of it. Um. I think they're cool city cars. Yeah. Um. I don't have a negative opinion of them. You know, uh, most people do. Most people think it's too much money think. for not enough performance because zero to sixty in like four or five, and it's one hundred fifty yeah. grand. And I love it. I think it's cool. You think it's great? Look at it. It's a concept car for the road. I think I, I think it's visually it's this year this generation's Countach. The in terms of how it looks. was the first car that I s- ever saw that proved to me that an electric car doesn't have to suck. You were driving and, an i three, yeah. They actually, I kind of like the i three. Yeah, and those are free. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they, you get one of those for pay, twelve. Yeah, they'll pay you to yeah. take one. And the leases cost the same as a cell phone. It's yeah. a joke. <laughs> but in terms of values, I see values continuing to go down, like all electric cars. Yeah, um, they, that's they the have problem. Not there's gone down no, that much. No, but there's no. What's the nostalgia of a fifteen or twenty year old hybrid? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you don't get nostalgic for a Prius one for a yeah, first time. You don't I, look at a Prius one. I'm not like, man, I, I'm wondering <laughs> if I should invest in an iPhone 3 right now. You know what I mean? Like, and it is, unfortunately, some of that. The values will continue to drop. However, it is a cool car. But for the money, I mean, it is kind of hard to justify if what you want is performance. However, I think it's so cool looking. And I completely, it's I think just cool proof looking. that you don't have to drive a boring box like a Leaf yeah. to have an electric car. I agree. Yeah, there are definitely cool electric cars. And the i3 is another cool one, too. Yeah. I wish they didn't artificially limit the fuel tank size in that car. In the i3? Yeah, because yeah. if it had a if it had a normal-sized fuel tank, it would be much more usable, usable than total. it is. Yeah. Absolutely. It's relegated to total city car status because of that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, let's see. Mr. Uh, M. Com- uh, Comley 2. Uh, my dad wants to replace his C6 Z06 with something else fun and more usable. He's considering a C63 M3 Caymans. He's in tight uh, northeast roads and some track days local to Lime Rock in Connecticut. Beautiful area. $50,000 budget. C2S made. What do you think for fifty grand? 50. Practical sports cars in the northeast. Uh, yeah. What about a C4S? Is a 997.2 C4S in that price range? It's probably. probably close. Yeah. It gets you, 50 grand gets you a decent amount of 997. I am a proponent of rear-wheel drive Porsches and snow tires. I don't think you need... The f- all-wheel drive, unless Fine. you're going up big mountains. Either one, I would be into much more than a, if you're tracking even a one track day. You don't want to see 63 AMG. Um, M3 Cayman, yeah, Cayman would be good too. Caymans are fun. They're fun on snow tires actually in the winter. F- and 50 grand gets you a shitload of Cayman. Does 50 get you Cayman R? Like another, like a probably because yeah, that's it probably a car. does. That's a rare car. Any, I think either of those two. That's probably what I would get if I wanted something really fun. And they're a lot more refined than C6 Z06. The thing with any of the front engine rear drive cars is they're stiff. Whereas yeah. a rear engine car, it's got those long front control arms that come well into the middle because there's no engine up there, so they ride a lot better at the front. And 997.2 C2S is modern enough that yeah. you'll feel like it's a pretty good car. The you can daily drive was good that enough. car. They had PDK. Yeah. 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 That's what I would go with a Porsche there, and there's not a lot of other things that really tickle my fancy for 50. Yeah, if you especially um, want track days. Maybe an M2? Oh, yeah. M2 is 50? The, they're like 55 new. Yeah, but... For a while, they were they were like preserving their value pretty well. Yeah. They made a lot of them. They made a lot of them. Kind of now dropped. you can just. Buy I mean, them. one M is a great is probably a good suggestion. Shit. That is. Could you believe how you could have bought one of those and driven it forty five thousand yeah. or fifty? I got 000 offered miles one of those at MSRP money. in eleven. You, that's that's your mistake. I know, and because mistake. at the time I was like, oh, it's just another BMW M car, mm-hmm. and then I drove one like a year later, and they're I a lot was of like, fun. Damn it! Yeah, they're fun. One of the best cars I think to, that I've ever driven. There's not a lot of cars like that that have that much more engine than chassis. 
Yeah. It's got a lot of engine and not much chassis. It's a ragged car. The size of it is perfect. The yeah. look is so subtle that only car people know what it is. Yeah. Valencia I put 2,200 miles on the press car in a week. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to get a third car, a third fun car after my Defender GT, it'd be a 1M. And yeah. so maybe that is the answer. If you can find a, a good 1M, yeah, that would yeah. be a good one. Thank you, sir. Uh, Niffin says, what's the best one car solution for a car guy? I drive a Macan Turbo. Miss having a sports car. I live in Texas, so weather isn't an issue. Macan turbos are nice. That probably is They're the best. Fucking dope. I mean, uh, you know, I just drove the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. That was pretty, oh, how did you like it? Pretty impressive. Yeah, the ride is really harsh when you go into like race mode, but the handling is like a Focus RS. Like it's insane. The good. engines are really good. Yeah, and did I mean, just throw any funky. Codes well, see, that's the thing. Right? You're kind of rolling the dice yeah. with the Alpha lease, dealing lease with the yeah lease. lease but I think back. honestly, Macan turbo is like on that level. I, I mean, yeah, if Macan, Macan turbo is like a ninety five thousand dollar car. So this guy's got some money. So if you're in Texas, you know, an M3, a 911, uh, you know, the, there's no, there's no 911s if you can are really great at everything as long as you don't carry around a lot of big That's shit. That's the problem. But if you, so he's got him a counter. I mean, if you need four doors, my AMG wagon is cool. You can still get a CPO 14, 15, 16 AMG wagon, which drives more like a sports car than a Macan turbo, but the not new quite. The new AMG the wagon new one is, is fucking awesome, dude. It's hey man, so great. It's the, yeah, it's, it is the best of the so best. So good. Everything is perfect. Everything about it is perfect. Except I wouldn't change appreciation. anything. I can't afford it. It's so good. 120. I pa- I bu- I paid for my five year old one. I paid 43. So that means you're gonna lose. 80. You lose an M3. Yeah. <laughs> and like I got the GT, but I I can't afford to lose. No, losing 80 <laughs> is a lot. That's a ton. Yeah. My dad got a my dad got a Cayenne Turbo brand new in 04. Hundred and twelve thousand dollars. That car is worth 8,800 bucks now. I on sold Craigslist. I sold it for him on eBay in 2008. Four years later. Heart of the recession. 40,000 miles on it. Yeah. 21 grand. Oh. <laughs> he took a $90,000 back. I just can't. I can't do that. Like, I can afford to buy a car like this, but I can't afford to get killed. Yeah. Me and either. That's yeah, a cool car, but I just can't. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, for obvious answers, 911s, M3s. If you can do the two-door AMG thing, stuff, 911, yeah. yeah. Um, there's not a lot. Uh, I mean, if, if you live in Texas... Maybe an LC five hundred. They're pretty rad. I like LC five hundred. What is it even Lexus? How does how is Lexus convinced Lexus. all these journalists? <laughs> that V eight is great. I like the LC five hundred. The LC five hundred is like not a, selling. You we could go into a Lexus dealer, you and me right yeah. now, and they'd offer us ten grand off an LC five hundred before we even talk to anybody. That's awesome. It's like a it's like a Corvette that's well made. I love how they look. Yeah, they look great. They're screwed together right. They're very comfortable. That's I a Corvette like, that's well made. That's a good yeah, point because they are well made. I will say that it's a beautiful interior. And they're fast. We had one at the track, and and we it was two seconds faster than a DB11 around the track, down 150 horsepower. <laughs> Fucking thing impressive. went, dude. Yeah. It goes. It's a nice car. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fan. Uh, thank you, Nathan. Cody says looking for an extra spooky track car. <laughs> Halloween question. <laughs> 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 Trying to decide between a Dragula and a Monster Coach. All right. Alternatives and thoughts. Uh, uh, are we trying to go for a Halloween? themed like scary TV show and movie cars. I have one for you. How about this? How about the The Ed Roth, the big daddy, Ed Roth coffin car. That looks like that's in the Galpin collection. It's a real car. Which way does it drive? The, 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 this oh, way. Oh, okay. Look, look, here's a person in it. Yeah, I can't, I need so he's sitting in. That's he's the, sitting in the back. Yeah, that bubble. That's where you fucking sit. Isn't that crazy? Man. It's a coffin car. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Yeah, Ed Roth was a weirdo, dude. A lot of LSD. A lot of LSD. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would go with. Oh, boy. MB is Frenchy. This guy gets real drunk and comments four or five <laughs> times every show and has a bunch of exotic cars that never work right. All right, good, good, good. Doug, the Ghibli is bad. It was the most obvious thing ever said. But what yeah. about the Gran Turismo? I have a 14 on extended warranty, upgrading to an 18. Yes, a lot breaks. Uh, Gran Turismo, I think, is the only Maserati that lives up to the brand and that what it has been historically. It is now an incredibly outdated car. Yeah. Um, however, it still sounds amazing, looks cool. I don't like how it looks, but a lot of people do, and that's the more important thing. And so in that sense, I think it's like the one good Maserati. The tech is ancient. They need to redesign it, but they're too busy making sedans with uh, low lease payments. Yeah, man. That, the Ghibli, it's not good. Worst value on the market. Yeah, they're all over LA. Dude. All oh god, I saw ten. Because LA people care how they look. They don't give and a shit. And that car is least they, special. People, and- people will drive something terrible if they think it makes, it makes them look, look rich. Cool. And people to this day, I have people. My passenger in a car. Oh look, a Maserati in front of us. Bro. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you poor, poor <laughs> sap. But that's why people get it. Yeah. yeah. The Gran Turismo is the best one, but. But, and I wouldn't buy one new. They're so expensive for what they are. Like but use grand. their steals. I mean, like 40 an grand. 08 is like 30, and it looks just like a brand new one. <laughs> the best used used deal, I think, is, a, is like an 08 Phantom. Because they're like 90 grand. If it stays reliable. I think they're okay, actually. And when you're done with it, you can it, uh, you can sell it to you Russia or Dubai or the something. Same, exactly the same, bro, bro. Look just like new Phantom, bro. That's exactly right. Exactly the same. That's why uh, there are no used old Phantoms because right. they all ship. Yeah, to Ex- markets that weren't rich when that special. car came out. <laughs> they just got they money. They just got money. <laughs> So fucking funny. That's it. Yeah. Do you know there's no Carfax in fucking Dubai? That's exactly right. Bro. So you smash one of those up, ship it, smash to Dubai. They out. fix it with what? Yeah. Exactly. Drive to there was no Hurricane Katrina in Dubai. <laughs> let me tell you. That didn't happen. A lot of people ask me about importing cars from fucking back from the Middle East. I'm like, don't do it, bro. None of that stuff. Never. No. Never. Japan is good because they take really yeah, good Yeah, they care. give a shit over there. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. They yep. bought them new there. Yep. yep. Well, That's they had so they much money in, there. The, in the 90s. Yeah. They had all the money we didn't have. So That's they right. bought all the and 911s. In Japan, it's such a big deal to buy it in the left-hand drive, like the whole yeah. market configuration. So there's really totally. good stuff. Yeah. And, uh, AP, actually, the, my friend, uh, their, their biggest issue is over-restoring. A friend of mine buys Porsches from Japan and says that they'll get a rock chip in the hood and respray the whole car. Oh, really? you know? Yeah. Because so. they want it to be like perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, AP says, Doug, there's a semi crappy white Lexus LX 470 <laughs> with 300,000 miles in Bucks County, wait, or Bucks, Colorado, Bucks County, whatever. Bucks County, PA, be. yeah. What is worse, a third gen LX or green text bubble? Oh, is that an inside joke? God, that's hard. No, because green text bubbles when you, you know, when you, oh, when you're not on an iMessage. <laughs> uh, third gen LX is worse than everything. I yeah. think that that kind of sums up. No, I like the third gen LX. It's just, which one is the, th- the, the, the current one? The, the, oh, it is, that's a 570. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, which is the 470? Oh, the, the 470 is okay. The 100 series, which everybody that likes. Okay. That was great. The third gen, though, the current one. Not good. <sighs> but should I try and get the Land Cruiser from Toyota for a uh, get, desert? If they have trip? one in a press fleet, I they do. Do they? Oh yeah. For what purpose? To to well, sell three more per year? People drive them. People, yeah. People journalists. Drive them. <laughs> right journalists there. drive them. Um, uh, yeah. Don't, I wouldn't. I would run from the three hundred thousand. <laughs> My Lexus. I you know I, I got nine hundred ninety six thousand miles. You're at nine ninety six. Yeah. Are you going to put mile one million on yourself? I am. Yes. I'm. I, oh, yeah, the, in is, Texas, right at the Lexus Texas, Museum, yeah. which oh, is apparently a thing. Apparently a thing. I just heard it's not going to be done until like June, though. Have they? Have you offered them one of your five RXs for the Lexus? <laughs> they're all gone. They're mostly oh, they're gone. all they've moved. No, on. my mom. There's two left, and they're they're at our South Carolina home, and they will probably last forever. I mean, we have an 03 with which was the f- last year of the first the, gen. It was a Gen 1.2, so it had the Altezza tail lights, right, but, right. but it was a first gen and I hated it when it was new. And now when I go down there, I fucking love it. The simplicity <laughs> of the styling. Simple. Although by then they were putting in that horrible screen. Maybe it, yours doesn't it have did it. Have the, it did have the first gen GPS. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. rough. Which sucks. I don't I never use it, but um I really appreciate it has 64,000 miles on it. And I really <laughs> That a- belongs in the Lexus it will Museum. It literally last forever it will. down there. Transmission was an issue long term on that car, but Yeah, but I mean not with my mom driving. Especially it. if it's only got 64 now, you're never going to get yeah, to no, a point where it's Dude, it get, it goes maybe 1,000 miles a year. You still yeah. find those on Craigslist like yeah. Sell, sell them for money. You can buy one yeah. for a. T- it's one of the cars I highly recommend to people who have like an eight grand budget. Yeah. who want a car for a high schooler. Our first, well, that, our first one, uh, which was a '97, um, had I don't know eighty thousand miles on it, maybe. And my mom gave it to my sister's college roommate for like a wedding <laughs> present. Like it was hilarious. <laughs> you know, just here you go, have a Lexus. <laughs> White people. Um, uh, Jacob, thank you for the watch advice. Oh yeah, I gave him some watch. Hi, Doug. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jacob. <laughs> Some people just like to throw a little cash in the pot. That's nice. nice. That's, you know, yeah, that's you, someone, this. Might, someone throws a hundred in here sometimes. This guy gave New Zealand money. I, that's what I love. And I know when they're from. NZ, Matt, you drove a 650 horsepower white Evo a while back that elicited some hilarious reactions from you. What about what about that car made you feel that? 650 horsepower in Evo. You guys, uh, when you have 650 horsepower in Evo, you have a turbo that is roughly the size of a volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and so it's not just that it's you drive a 650 horsepower supercharged V8, you know, the power builds, right? You know, like a ZR1, right? But when you drive an Evo with 600, it spools the turbo and you just get a, <laughs> I can a only shove. Imagine. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, that, was that local? 
It was. He's just driving around. Yeah, I drove it up in the you know in the canyon. Yeah, but he's he like owns it. He here just drives it around. Yeah, <laughs> lives in it. Yeah, and um, when you have a car that's a little four cylinder but boosted that much, the amount of torque and just shove, you know, the pressure on your chest from yeah. that level of, and also you know it's an Evo. It, that, it's so overpowered at that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it was never designed to handle that. It much. feels like it wants to eat itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, you go, I'm gonna stay <laughs> in it, but this is this is a fucking millimeter from just exploding. Yeah. You know, so and then it eventually will, and the dude and it will be eventually like, Evos aren't reliable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, James says we should swap video styles sometime. Sure. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Once. Maybe we were going to do... We talked about doing a crossover video with the Countach. We should. Maybe. I'm down. Or maybe with, you haven't done a Safari 911. You know, I that. did do a Countach, but I did an anniversary, and I'd love yeah. to do yours. Yeah, we can do, we'll can. we do a crossover uh, for sure. Thank you, James. Willis says uh, best crate engine, Hellcat, the new Hellcat crate engine versus the LT5 from the ZR1. The LT5 is a ZR1 motor? They sell it yeah. as a crate? They do. Are you kidding? Yeah, they do. What can you <laughs> put it in anything? Well, the thing about the LT5 is the you know the reason LS engines are such good crate engines is not because just because they're powerful and durable. It's because they're small. Yeah. And and a, a Hellcat engine. If you've ever seen a Hellcat engine on a stand outside of a car, yeah, it's the size of this table. So you need it. You can only put it like a class. You can only put it in certain things. Bang. Whereas you know an LS or an LT engine will fit in a BMW. It'll fit. You can put it a fucking LT5 in an E30 if you wanted. So they're selling the, the LT5 as a crate motor. Yeah. What I don't is know it? what they're selling it for. Hang on. What does it cost? Yeah. I don't know. Let's look at GM performance. Crate engine now available. Fuck off, seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> well, I mean, what? It ain't gonna be free. Is that right? What is, what is no, an LS? Seventeen is so cheap. What? So cheap <laughs> for an LT. You're like, oh, I should get a ZR1. Here, look, you can shop on Google Shopping, <laughs> right here. Summit Racing, seventeen thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars. That is a lot. So, like an E Rod LS3, the four hundred and fifty horsepower one, is about seventy five hundred bucks. Really. Great value, man. Yeah, totally. Especially you know, if you have a car that it, like an RX-7, the notorious problems, totally. and you want to put in something else. And totally, there's a lot of things an LS or an LT engine would make better. But the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the reason the LT is a better a better crate motor is because of the size and the weight. It's much much smaller. Thank you, Willis. Here's MB is French again. Updates coming from your car's braking, Doug. And yes. Yes, uh, I launched my second YouTube channel so that I can make these kind of updates, and I'm just waiting for it to be monetized. Yeah, why did you I'm do really that? Well, because people who watch watch my first channel only want to see the reviews, and so I wanted to kind of get creative and do some other weird stuff, mm. and not have to worry about it hurting the views. And do you so, actually think it would hurt the yeah. views? Really? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the way that you know they send it out to your subscribers, and if they're not clicking on it, then they stop sending it as much. It's my theory, and so and a lot of other YouTubers have told me. So my theory was, if I want to do weird stuff, mm. I should make a second channel and I can kind of do some weird, bizarre videos. Huh. And just kind of, it's also a good experiment, like test bed. Like how does you know how does this stuff how does this do? Play? Okay. How does it play? What day? What time? Kind of try some other stuff. So those are coming. Fair enough. Those are coming. All right, Mister Someone. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a 2013 Camaro SS or a 2012 Mustang GT. Which do you think is better, and which is good for modifying? Is the is that the coyote? Must that is a coyote. Twenty eleven was the first coyote, year. Yeah. Um. I mean, you you probably know more about this than I do. I think I think the, they're both. I've driven both. They're great cars. But. I think they're fine. The twenty thirteen is the updated Camaro SS. I think. It might have been fourteen though. You definitely want the updated one. You do not want the twenty ten. The fir, the fi, you want the oh, update. Really? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. It made a big difference. Oh, interesting. And I don't remember. I know that it's came a better in thirteen car, or fourteen. Yeah. So typically, the Camaro is a little faster and a quote better platform but the mustang is a better place to spend your time that's usually how it's broken i love that that body mustang i thought it was great i like the camaro too though honestly i that's a hard one i'm not like allied to either brand so it's hard for me and i don't know that much about modifying i mean one isn't significantly better than the other they both have an aftermarket for anything you want to do yeah you know uh, (laughs) you know it's tough the the downside of the mustang the mt82 gearbox is is this terrible gearbox that it comes with? And it's fragile. That's the downside. Oh, it's for the power. Camaro has a Tremec, which is a stronger gearbox. But beyond that, dude, it's totally personal preference. Yeah. You know. Uh, thanks, uh, Ian Schwartz. I'm gonna cut off super chat right now. So not Ben 101 is gonna be the last one at the bottom, and, and you guys can stop asking super chat questions because we're gonna have to go home soon. <laughs> uh, where are we at here? Oh my God! Wait, where were where were we? 
Holy shit, there's too many. <laughs> um, car for two days in Arizona, base Mustang or Wrangler? Uh, it Mustang. Depends, depends when. If yeah. in the summer, neither. <laughs> yeah, car um, with air conditioning. With air conditioning. But yeah, if it's in the winter, which is when everybody goes to Arizona, Mustang, if you can get a convertible. I don't ever recommend renting a Wrangler. Especially because Arizona, actually you're actually driving long distances road. and yeah. stuff. I don't want to be part of that. Although Highway. the new JL is better. I've heard that, but I still don't recommend renting a Wrangler unless you're actually going off road. Yeah. Kyle says, I have an 07 Miata. Do I add a Fiesta ST to my garage or as a fun daily and sell the Miata and get a Veloster N? Located in suburbs of Chicago, size is not a big deal. Um, so keep the Miata and get a Fiesta, or sell is, the Miata and get a Veloster. Oh seven is NC. Yes, I never loved the. I never loved the NC. I mean, a Fiesta ST is way more fun to drive than an NC Miata. Period. <laughs> so it is. Get rid of the Miata and just get the Fiesta. It is. The Veloster is a ton of fun. I don't know if the Veloster is dramatically more fun than the Fiesta ST. Is the problem the Veloster N? It is more fun. It's like more power, but I don't know that it's so much more fun that it would justify me selling one vehicle. But I yeah. think Fiesta ST is the one that I, I yeah like go with that. The answer or to just that. get a Focus ST. And I mean, either of those. Fiesta ST is more fun than Focus ST. Even even independent think, of price and everything. You think so? Yeah. Fiesta Wait, ST was way more fun than I thought it would be when I drove it. You know why? It's 2,650 pounds. Yeah. The Focus ST is 3,200. There's they, no way to make up for that Both of those cars weight. have amazing steering feel. They do. And the RS is the sharpest steering of any of those cars, but it's, it's Be also All heavy. better than the Veloster N in terms of steering feel, by the yeah. way. Uh, thanks, Kyle. Matt G. Oh, thank you for the great videos. No problem. Opinions on the Subaru SVX. Love it. Terrible transmission. All the transmissions died. The guys replaced with manuals. Love how it looks. Hate how it drives. Oh, you've driven? You yeah, don't like? They drive heavy. Mm. And only 230 horsepower yeah. wasn't much. It was all Subaru how, could do at the I time. I love how it looks. Same. I can't wait to do a video on one. I got to yeah. do one. That one at Bring a Trailer today was, was super nice. nice. Yeah. I never knew the back windows went down. I never knew that. <laughs> Neither did I. Did it go down? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, really? There were power windows in the back of that car. Oh, I, I never, literally that. never knew that until today. It's so funny. Those weird windows. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sean says two plus two for daily driving in back roads to own for two years. Fun and low depreciation. A 997 C2S, Avora S, GT350, M2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, low depreciation. 997.2 C2S will definitely depreciate Porsches low. are the best depreciation. M2 is an amazing car. I love GT350 R. I haven't driven the regular. Have you? I have. If you can afford it, the R is worth the money. R is the R is great. One of the great cars I've driven. Yeah. Evora, I'm not that into. The Evora 400 is rad. Some people are obsessed with them. It's not my thing. I'm not obsessed. I just think it's a nice car. Yeah. NSX? Oh, no, 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 two plus two. I mean, I, I, I just say Porsches. 911 is the answer for this question. I yeah, think. probably. Although M2 boring, is compelling. M2 yeah. is compelling. Yeah, you're right. 911 is the answer. It's more it's more of a true sports car than M2. It yeah. is boring. And but a 9972 is already depreciated. Whereas yeah. an M2 is going to be... The 997.2 depreciation curve now is very, flat. very flat. flat. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Sean. Ed says, opinion on a current gen WRX as a daily driver in Salt Lake City. They're fine. Sure, yeah. And they Salt Lake doesn't get that much. No, you yeah, they don't really do anything for me. Oh, the, you don't like them? They don't do anything for me like emotionally. I've driven them. They're fine. But they're fun as They dailies. check off some boxes. They have big back seats. We would both recommend probably Focus ST or Focus RS if you can swing it over a WRX. I think they're more. I think the Fords are more fun. Same. Yeah. I actually also think a Ford or GTI is more fun if you don't need the all-wheel drive. Interesting. Even that the power loss compared to WRX? Golf R is cool. Golf R, if you can swing it. That's big money. WRXs are fine. They don't they don't tickle my fancy, but they're all right. Yeah. Also new or used. Uh, that's a financial question, not and, a car question. Yeah, and they sell for the same anyway. So <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Matter. Uh oh, budget was fifty thousand for his two plus two. I still uh, okay. say yeah, still, I still yeah, say nine seven. Yep. Yeah. Uh Doug. Uh, AP says, Doug, end of an era thinking about selling the black X three. Okay, this is my friend. You know my friend guy? has an X three, yeah. 130,000 miles. Kelly Blue Book is three grand? Three grand. What should you do with it? Put it on Nantucket. Yeah. That's what you do with $3,000 used SUVs. Yeah. <laughs> is it really just three grand? Those original X3s and X5s have gotten killed. You can pick wow. one up for free. Wow. But I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's, it's like an 04, I think it is. I mean, I'd lift it on a four inch <laughs> lift and put big tires on it and take it wheeling. I actually thought that the original X3 and X5 are some of the most beautiful SUVs ever made. They First were so X5 clean. X5 was really nice. So clean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you do with it? Give it to me. I will crush it with something. Yeah. I, I mean, will run it over. Yeah. I would take it, I would drive it off road across an entire state. I would do one of the backcountry discovery Throw routes. Throw some in super it. swampers yep. on it. Yep. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Matt oh, G somebody says someone else loves the anniversary, loves the anniversary Me, this guy, and Pagani. Matt we're the G. three. Yep. Uh, I Hydro Eyes. Thank you to Matt and Doug for the A-plus content. You're welcome. Thank you for the podcast. Hey, here we are. Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate that. Makes Mr. my commute better. People are listening to the commute. Mr. Someone wants to know, what do we think oh, about the Lamborghini Cala Such concept? a cool car. One of the all-time coolest cars that never got built. One of the um, most beautiful. You know the car. Right? I do, yes. I just want to get a picture yeah. of it for everybody else. This is the thing they were going to make that was going to be a baby the Diablo. Gallardo. Yeah, it was going to basically fill that role in the 90s. Yeah, why didn't this happen? Because they, Lambo changed hands. So I think this was commissioned by either Chrysler when they owned them. This is a Tal design. Yeah, so for a Tal design, a Tal design designed it. The design itself was commissioned by whoever. Yeah, Chrysler, and, maybe. Yeah, yes. and but then when Audi took over, they were like, yeah, we're done. But... Or, or maybe it was when Chrysler took over, it was commissioned by the prior people. But regardless, Ooh. it wasn't allowed. And I think it is one of the coolest looking really cars cool. that was never made. It's rare that we get a question that I imagine. I, I've never asked about this so car. So 1995 would have been uh, Chrysler ownership. Yeah. It's so maybe they fucking, were like, eh. it's pretty cool looking. So cool looking. Pretty ahead cool of its looking. time. I think it still looks like a modern car. Yeah. And so it, it, had, it, it, it had a V10 in it, right? I don't remember what motor was in it. And I don't know much about the, it. Is that the interior? Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It looks like it looks like a concept car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, really cool concept car. I, I wish I, they had been built a great it. one. One of yeah. the sad things probably that they never did. We could buy them used now. Uh, AP says again, thoughts on a GSF? Could I daily it in New Jersey? Yes, get a set of snow tires. You're good. You could probably. No, it you're depends good. where you are in Jersey. You could probably even get away with all season. Look, this guy again. Mm. Some prick lightly sideswipes my Gran Turismo while parked in front of my house in Queens. Of course, he's from <laughs> fucking Queens. <laughs> Would you pay eighty k for a one car garage plus a lift to store two cars? Yes. <laughs> In Queens? Is cheap in Queens for a two car. <laughs> yeah, you probably, garage, yeah. you probably would. You probably would. That's a one car garage in Manhattan is a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, car fund says I daily drive a BMW E46 330 coupe thinking about replacing it with an E46 M3. Is it worth spe- if you already have a 330 coupe? Is it worth spending 10,000 more to get an M3? For one car. Uh, no, especially because of the no. problems that the E40... What, what, you've already had an E46. You've already dealt with all the BS. Yeah. Let's move on you to an E90. <laughs> yeah. I'd spend 15 k more to get the V8. Yeah. And E46 had the Vano stuff and the subframe. And I just... That era of... There's no such thing as a mint E46 <laughs> M3. <laughs> Every E46 M3 needs been 10 Gs and shit. Totally. All of them. Because at some point, they were cheap used cars. Yeah. And people treated them like cheap yeah. used cars. And boy, did they rag them out I and mean, modify Zach, them. I mean, you know, my Zach got a really nice one that still needed 10 grand worth of shit. And it was a really nice yeah. one. Like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And think about the ones that were lowered and had like green oh. lights and yeah. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> let's see. Where else are we? <laughs> Do you have to go, Doug? No, it's, no, I'm, good, right, I'm cool. good. We'll, we'll get through. This until... is very interesting to me. I this is it like is, real right? time interacting. I know. Uh, Michael says I'm building an 04 crown Vic with a coyote motor oh, and wow. a five speed, lots of suspension brakes to go around corners in Appalachia. Flame me. Of course he's in Appalachia, no, but, but still, that is an awesome build. That's so yeah, cool. That sounds fun. I mean, especially if you keep it stock on the outside and have yeah. it just look like a like a Crown Vic. I drove a full suspension Crown Vic that, other than the automatic gearbox, was great to drive. It had nice steering. It had good brakes. Yeah. Like, it, there, I, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a cool car. Do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Nonetheless, of course he's in Appalachia. Of course you're in Appalachia. <laughs> is you gonna run over squirrels? <laughs> Tim Tim says I love your content. Sign off and watch the World Series. Go Sox. I got you, buddy. No problem. Armin says, what brand? new car do you think has the best looks aesthetic only and then he's got a bunch of qualifiers oh boy the answer under 100 is 100 150 and over 500 huh volvo volvo the the overall brand there's not a bad looking volvo okay they all are beautiful that's true the current lineup the there's current not lineup. a bad looking the current lineup not a bad looking one i agree and i can't say that about any other brand there's uh I mean, I hate to say Porsche again. I don't brands. think I don't yeah. think Porsche's ma- in between 100 and 500. I don't think Porsche's got an ugly car. No, no, no. Over 500, <laughs> all I mean, of them. Is there a, is there yeah. a bad looking car over 500? The McLaren Speedtail. <laughs> you don't like the Speedtail? No, I think it's ugly. Come on, I think it's ugly. I'm allowed to think it's ugly. Think nah, it's, ugly. it's cool. I mean, it's it's functional, I guess, but I think I don't think it looks good. It is weird. Yeah, it's a weird. lot of those really expensive it's cars a, are actually weird. The P1 is a little weird looking. P- Senna is really weird. Senna looking. is really Senna's weird. Senna is not looking. a good looking car. <laughs> no, no. It's just not. I saw one in person the other day. It's not pleasant. Yeah, yeah. it's got a lot going on. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, they're all, yeah, sorry. Ray says, same money, 9972 GTS manual or 9971 turbo manual. I say 
the GTS. Oh, really? I would say the Turbo. Would you? Yeah. They're both great. They're both great, but I think the, the GTS is... Uh, 9971 Turbo, though, was like one of my... That was that car was so great. So sweet. Oh, 9972. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm going to re- reverse. I say go with the Turbo. Yeah, GTS, 9972 GTS. Yeah, I would get the 9971 Turbo Manual. I thought it was 991 GTS. I, I missed oh, yeah, yeah. That, I would, that would probably be a different situation, but 9971 Turbo yep. Manual Coupe was yep. a great car. A good one. And reliable. Metzger motor. Yep, yep. Uh, and with that manual, you can put like 900 horsepower yeah, down. Yeah, and people do. And so you never have to worry about reliability. Fast, fast, dude, yeah, totally. yeah. Sam Smith says, uh, is the F80 too stiff for long trips and commuting? The M5 he's referring to. Or the F10 550i with a dine and tune. F80, no, you, no, the F80 is definitely fine. doable. Yeah, F10 550 the dine and tune. I mean, I wouldn't do that. I don't know if I want to roll the dice on that kind of thing. People have much different risk dine tolerances. Tune, me, though. Dine and tunes are very conservative. They're they're not. There's not a lot of issues with reliability, but you want the other things you get with the M5 too, right? More than just the tune, right? You know, and F80 a tune is, a is great, great car. Hell yeah, fantastic car. Not too stiff. Has it has adjustable shocks, comfort mode. It's 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 fine. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Oh boy, do either of us have shady dealer stories? Uh, oh, we got a Miller, <laughs> yeah, Miller a asked, Connecticut guy. Oh my god, yeah, Miller <laughs> asked two sixty k for a DBS Volante manual. They agreed to two fifteen, but then wanted more. Hey, I got a. Oh, it's, it's, it's the, the dealer, same fucking we, guy, dude. He, one of my shady dealer stories is uh, there's more to this I'm story. Stop, I'm gonna stop answering. There's he un- gives us undoubtedly more to this story, like and I that's said, one of the things drunk. that always happens with dealers. Oh, they wanted this. They did this. Ah, did that really happen? No, he left. He's le- he's leaving things out. He, <laughs> he complains about dealers all the time on this show, and so he always. Guy. Have you ever communicated every show? With him? Like, no, he only communicates this way, <laughs> and every show he complains about dealers fucking him. And I guarantee you, based on only these interactions, it's not the dealer; it's him. Right. This is the guy that Someone every complains dealer about hates. it enough. Right. Oh, uh, this dealer did this. This dealer did that. Eventually, you he gotta realize and tries to nickel and dime a dealer on everything, and then also complains about. About everything you right. can't have both no either be the nickel and dimer but then shut up and go away right once they or, agree to your bs yeah or pay full price and you can hound them about shit <laughs> right. you can't have fucking both right but many people try to i don't have any shady dealer stories i mean not really no i I'm, no and at this point every time i go into a dealer they recognize me and so they like, recognize me i'm Someone done Someone recognizes it's me over and i have to pay full price <laughs> It's fuck. I can't beat anybody up because then they go on the internet and they go, "This fucking guy came in That's here." That's exactly tried to right. Beat me up. There are some benefits to being people recognized, and there's really some drawback too. Yeah. Like you have to worry about your reputation way more often than yeah. I realized. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to be nice to everybody. Yep. Uh, Matt, you seem to have an, uh, an eye for appreciating the finer things in life: cars, watches, leather, boats. That's true. Would I go so far as to consider myself an Epicurean? I have to look up that word. Yeah, I don't. I'm... What's an Epicurean? Uh, uh, of oh, this is these definitions stink. Uh, of concerning Epicurean, a person devoted to sensual enjoyment. Is that what it is? Well, that's what it's. Oh, says person here. devoted you- to sensual enjoyment, especially divided from food and drink. I like good food and I like good. Drink. I like nice things. I don't. I'm not ashamed you to say that I like, like nice things. And you and you know what nice things are. I like things that are well made for sure. I like things that someone gave a shit about how it was made and yeah. what they did to make it and yeah. how it was engineered. I yeah. Guess. yeah, sure. I like nice stuff. <laughs> Thanks, man. Tim Hogg, Doug, when are we going to see a video from you on a vector? That's probably one of the gets. Huh? You know, I get questions like this all the time. When are we going to see this? When are we going to see that? Hey, man, you got well, one? Yeah, you got one. Well, Jerry <laughs> Wiegert lives in L.A. I would give anything to do a video on a Vector W8, but it's not that easy. Finding There's a car 14 like that of them. is impossible. And yeah. then you got to find somebody who's willing to go through the song and dance with me. Like, yeah. let me have it for six hours and yeah. let me. And that's not easy. And yeah, I mean, that's a holy grail thought car. About, you ever thought about doing a coding thing? You ever thought about a Shiro? But that, that. That is a holy grail car for me, but uh, give me XJ220. Three, give me three holy grail cars. I can get you one if you want to go to England. XJ220. Yeah, for real. 100%. If you want to go to England, I got one. Is, for it, you. is it like stock and nice? Yeah, yeah. 100%. I know I'm a very good friend of mine has one, and you could I could get you into Don Law Racing, who Which maintains the, all yeah, of them. The place that people yeah, send yeah. them to. Not oh. only that, they have the super van. They have the, the super van as a Ford Transit that has a complete XJ220 <laughs> powertrain. It's what they <laughs> is use. Is it mid mounted? Yes. It's what they use as the development mule for the engine. No way. Yep. So they drive it around and no one knew that yep. they were testing. Except it has XJ220 wheels on it. <laughs> Which at the time, nobody you know nobody knew what those were. Before, right. It was before the car came out. But if you wanted a 220 and you wanted to go to England, that I could set it up. That is a you. holy grail car for me, and we got to talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, EB110. Oh, yeah. Is one. Yeah. It's still Veyron. 12 <laughs> throttle bodies. I mean, that car, there was one at Cars and Coffee in San Diego on Saturday. 
And what the hell? Right? Everything about that car is nuts. And you'll Weird never, as like, hell. as I walked away from it, I was thinking to myself, it may be years before I see another one of these. Yeah, there's, I've seen yeah, maybe four or five in my life, you know, yeah. usually in the kind of places where you fucking would see yeah, one. Yeah, right, pebble know? and yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. on a lawn. I've never seen one just on the no. road. I've never <laughs> no. seen one moving. No, ever. that's one of the cars I would absolutely flip about. That's in a Holy Grail car. F50, Veyron to me is yeah. still a Holy Grail car. That car, Veyron was like, that was so special back in the day. Sharon, I think, is probably better. Yeah, but one. Veyron like blazed the trail and Sharon yeah. like improved on it. Do you remember how insane Veyron was when it came out at 06? Yeah, I do. I do. It was so cool. I, it was I, the first. Maybe I just was. I didn't appreciate it as much. First car that went over a million you know, dollars. That was a big uh, thing. And Top Gear, everybody knew all the numbers. Like, oh, it'll run out of yeah. fuel and however oh, yeah, many. Yeah. Everybody, nine really radiators. A, sta- a stats car. Everybody knew all that yeah. stuff. And now there's so many cars in that segment that people don't care as much about that stuff anymore. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, opinions on 9972 PDK for a daily. Very Fine. good. PDK Easy. is very stout. Easy. I uh, Yes, I think if your wife does not enjoy driving manual, it's an automatic when you want it to be an automatic. It shifts really, really fast. Very fast. And it still feels... Even a 997, the shift speeds still feel modern. You'd have to drive a brand new one to even tell that it's not a new technology. And it's robust. It's reliable. Are we almost fucking there? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Oh, my God. There's so many. I could probably get through a few of these. Uh, Where did I say we were going to bail? I forget. Uh, Don't forget Porsche design. Uh, Right. Thank you, Edward King, for your donation. Uh, how's the exhaust of the Ferrari Portofino versus the Cal- versus the NA California? Portofino the NA California amazing. is a piece of junk. The California T is pretty decent. T's good, yeah. How's Portofino? Portofino is nice? amazing. Is oh, nice? One of the better cars I've driven this year, which blew me away because like the entry level Ferrari, whatever. I was, was shocked amazing. how good the California T was, yeah. and I hated the regular you, California. Portofino is even better. You will love it. I gotta get one. It more. will still have the stigma, but it's an amazing car. Yeah, that's no one will like a California T either. The Doesn't video, matter. The video tanked. Nobody cared about yeah. it. But I really liked driving it. Yep. It was like. As easy as any, you know, it might you as well drive it around, or run errands and totally. shit. Yeah, you can drive it around great. like nothing, or you can bomb and it's very amazing. fast. Yeah. yeah, that's a car where a hundred horsepower made all the difference. Yeah, totally. You know, totally. Yeah, Nate says, uh, following in your footsteps and buying a V8 Vantage, is there a big enough difference to buy the 4.7 liter? It's ten thousand more than a 4.3 liter. I said, I said yes. Have you? Dri- I've never driven 4.7. I've only driven a V12, and then the one I had. I think. For ten thousand, I think it is. If you can afford the ten thousand, like the four point seven, will never depreciate to where the four point three is, right? Because right, so, it's always gonna yeah, push so the other one down. If you put the ten thousand in now and you've got it, you'll get it back at the other end, or yeah, you'll at least get the portion, portion of it. Of it yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I didn't love that car. I thought it was really cool, but um, and I drove it across the country. It was a special car, but I did, there's a lot of other stuff I would get. Although now they're so cheap. They're cheap. They're yeah. like in the 40s. Hard to beat that. Even a Maserati doesn't come close to the brand name of yeah. that car at that money. And I think Definitely get just, a manual. Having Definitely just, get yeah, a manual. Yeah, 100%. Having just spent time with the new one, I think I appreciate how the old one looks a little bit. The old one now. is beautiful. I like, the, I like the look of the new one, but the old one was more yeah. classic and yeah. beautiful. Uh, Greg says, the new Bronco. Is it a four-door, a removable top, vintage look? Oh, God, I wish I knew. I can't wait to find out. That yeah. new Defender are the ones that I most think about every day. Every day I think about new Bronco, new Defender. I wake up and I'm like, oh. I don't, uh, I don't comment on cars until they're real cars. Oh. People put these fucking concept yeah. drawings There's up. There's so many renderings what do you that think some about, dude made. Yeah, what that's do you think helpful. about this? Like, I don't think about anything until it's a I will say car. they better make a four-door. If that's a two-door, I get the heritage and all that, but like, that's not what people Nobody want. Nobody wants a two-door People do SUV. not want a two-door SUV. And yeah. the Wrangler is proof, right? They yeah. finally made a four-door. Now it's 80% of the sale. Yeah. Uh, Riga Chuko, back again, still automatic 540i. Any tips for locating garages to rent for doing maintenance God, and SF. mods in San Francisco? No idea. San Francisco just, is apparently a nightmare for that stuff. There's land is, is expensive. Yeah. It's really tight. Good luck. I have absolutely no idea, dude. I don't. I don't Move know. Move out of anything. the Bay Area. Yeah, I don't know anything about. Come hit up join Mike us in Musto. Southern California. Mike Musto might know. He's on. He's on the east side. He's in Walnut Hill or Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek. Walnut, Walnut Hill. Creek. That's Walnut pretty Creek. far out there, though. It's pretty far out there. But like this guy's in, not, he's not going to drive over the Bay Bridge and crap to do his. Bro, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've I've been to San Francisco. It's a nightmare. Less oh, than really? five times. Is that right? In the city? Yeah, less. Than yeah, five same. Times. Whenever I go up there, I'm never in the city. Go to Alcatraz. That's fun. <laughs> I recommend that. I'm sorry, dude. I can't help you. Um, hey, guys, just moved to states from the UK, and I love driving the Malibu Canyons. What's the etiquette you need to know? Number one, don't cross the fucking double yellow line. Motorcycle. That's pretty much it. Don't cross the double yellow line. Like, really, no one cares how fast you go. Eyes up. Look out for cyclists. If you're going to go 
So for me, I always, if I'm going to go fast, will go downhill first, right? Because the cyclists are going 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. So if you're going to catch a cyclist, you're going to catch a cyclist at a reasonable closing speed. You then turn around and go up the hill because you've scouted it on the way down. So if there are cyclists going slow up the hill, you know and you remember them and they're going very slowly, you remember where they'll be on the way up. So That makes sense. Yeah, so you scout the road on the way down, you stay on your side of the WO line, are there, are there cyclists. accidents with cyclists up yes. there? Yes. Yeah. And there's a real animosity between cars and cyclists. Yeah, and motorcycles too, right? It's like a... Eh, not so much motorcycles, but but cyclists and cars... You know, is is a is a is, there's an ongoing sort of animosity there, and Up I there. I do my best to make sure that that everyone can enjoy the road and, and that everyone stays safe. Nothing will ruin a day in the canyons like vehicular homicide. <laughs> yeah, Doug, I know you're not a BMW guy, but what's your input on the very tunable twin turbo N54? Is it the modern day two JZ? What was the N54? Is that the one, the twin turbo one in the three thirty? Three thirty five. Three thirty five. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, it was in a lot of cars. Didn't it have some problems? Wasn't that one of the fuel pump? Wasn't I the think? fuel pump where they had a yeah. class action? Yeah. The cars that it's in though is amazing. And people come up to me. I've had people, several people recently come to me and say, I got a 335. Should I tune it? And I'm like, no, that car's got more than enough power. You're good. The balance is good on that car. I love that motor as a stock motor. I don't know much about modding I've driven stuff. some tuned ones. It, you can make huge horsepower. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drove one that was 800 horsepower. It had a big single turbo on it. It was really? a runway car. Horsepower? Yeah, it was a runway car. Yeah. Fucking fast. A runway man. car with a twin turbo six. That no, was what they went. Single turbo six. They took but off the twins. Was, that's yeah, what yeah. they went with. They, yeah. Wow. It was really fast. How fast is it going on the runway? I I feel like it was like 190 <sighs> in the half, like mile. A half mile. Yeah, <laughs> in a half mile. It was really, really fast. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There I mean, I don't think it's quite as stout as a two JZ, but you can make huge power in them. Two yeah. JZ is world famous. Uh Edgar says, What are guys' opinion on SEMA? Do we attend? Have you attended? Um, I will be attending any tips or things to look out for. You go to SEMA? I did for a while. I'm now in a position in life where I never have to go again. <laughs> it's, it's bad, you know, like no, it's look, too much. Here's where I sound like a douche. Warning, sound like a douche. If I wasn't me, and if you weren't you, if you're just an anonymous person. It's great. If you can go and you don't have too much work to do and you can just wander around and look at shit, it's great. But if you're even a little bit of a celebrity, it's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And that's that's my opinion about SEMA. You, I can't go five feet without being stopped or pulled this one way or whatever. Yeah, you know, and not by fans, by people who want to sell oh, me something interesting. Yeah. or get me to feature their... You got to feature my fucking product. What do you make? Radiator caps. <laughs> Bro, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's 30 conversations like that an hour, you know? So, Interesting. So I, I don't go. But if you're not like a personality that is going to have that happen to you it's very interesting i've never gone i think it'd be cool some of the stuff that comes that i see pictures of is like hilarious and i love like custom modded cars yeah that are like something that the manufacturer didn't do i don't i'm not into like wheels and bigger but i'm into like you know they do a different body style or oh, something like that like a six shit. door f-150 i'm into yeah. stuff like that but yeah that cool would stuff. that would be kind of hard one of the one of the sadnesses of what i do is that like today's cars and coffee like i couldn't i, I only saw like four or five cars it's that's the hard. problem with a lot being us is it's hard to enjoy a car show because Hard. we get dragged into conversations, we can't really just which walk are fun. Like I enjoy speaking to the people, but then I noticed as I was talking to some guys, oh, like wait, after two a... hours, stuff's leaving, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I wanted to take a look at that. It's that's you know, not a lot that I of... don't enjoy. I love talking to the people. I really do. But Probably you, more you than looking at the cars, but I'd like to cars. do more. Yeah. You know, it's I have a anytime I go to a car event, it's really hard for me to just look at the cars because I get sucked into these conversations, and you don't want to walk yeah. away. Or and whatever. some of them are really interesting. And honestly, some some of the time it's better to talk to the people, but. So some there are times when I go to these that I'm like, man, I just wanted to look. Can at I that just car look at that car longer. real quick? Yeah, I know. It's 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 the up and down of the of the the life, you know. Yep. Uh, C R Claw says Subaru Crosstrek manual or VW Golf all road manual, putting on a ton of miles in northern Minnesota. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the Crosstrek is Minnesota, so man. slow. That that motor is although that golf it's actually golf, all track that also all, that's also slow. Neither of those cars are particularly exciting. I think the answer is by the reliable one, and that is the Subaru. The Subaru. Probably Lee Keen, who is a racing driver who's building my Safari car. His daily is a cross track. Oh really? Yeah. So it's lifted a little bit on big knobby tires, and he likes it. Those things so. run and run and run in northern Minnesota. You yep. you need that obviously. Uh, thank you, David, for the donation. We're getting to the end, folks. Sean Smith says I'm selling my 1966 Mustang GT for more. Vintage USA muscle as a special drive. Fifth car for thirty-five grand. Should I get a sixty-nine Mach One, sixty-nine Camaro, Factory Five Cobra, or Daytona? I say, 
a 69 Mach 1 or a C3 Corvette. Have you driven on this car? I don't I don't know that much about this car. I yeah, love how I those have. Camaros look. The 69 Camaro? Yeah, I love them. Yeah. But I don't know I've, I don't know how much how all these cars drive. Factory 5 those cars are interesting, but I it'd be cool to drive a 69 Camaro. Those things are boss. 69 Camaros are cool. I mean, I have a, a personal attachment to a Mach 1. A, a friend of mine growing up had one. I thought it was great. You know, I think it, there's a lot those to like. Cool. It's a great style. 69 is totally. a great year for the Mustang. There's a lot of 69 Camaros around. It's yeah. the most common muscle yeah. car. Yeah. And so, excuse me. And so, so you're I, saying C3 Corvette is another possibility. That's I like. Yeah, I'll throw my I, hat. I think it's cool. I'll throw my hat in a C3 Corvette ring. Yeah. Also, how about a, how about a, a Cuda? One of the smaller motors. Are those Cudas. available for 35? Maybe smaller motor, non numbers matching. That's a cool driver. looking car for 35. Or how about this? How about a Mercury Cougar Eliminator? They're fucking rad. That's yeah. a different. That's a different take on it. Yeah. All right. Two more thoughts on a C thirty six AMG sorted for three thousand. Right, well, first off, three grand ain't buying you a sorted C thirty six. Three grand ain't buying you. A I sorted love anything. that car deeply. It's one of my all time favorite Mercedes cars. Three grand is not enough to really get you what you want. But budget for maintenance and repairs, and I think it's. I think it is the most subtle, awesome, cool looking AMG of all time. I want to see forty three so badly. I drove a C forty three that had a manual one. swap. Really? Yeah, it was cool. There's a manual that bolts up to yeah, it. Yeah, it's a um No, I I know what? I'm conflating. I'm sorry. I drove a CLK 430 with a manual swap. But that's swap the same motor. That was cool. And I drove a C43 that had the 55 engine dropped into it, which a C55 was a real thing overseas. They did a C55 on the next generation. No, I'm talking about the You're boxy talking the boxy one. one. Yeah, and it was rad. That's cool. so cool. The 36 engine is pretty neat actually. Straight 6. Yeah. That was just to me one of the best looking Oh God, I love how. That but for three thousand, expect to spend ten more. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sorted. I it's not sorted. <laughs> it just isn't. No <laughs> you need way. to spend. Truthfully, you need to spend fifteen to get a really nice C forty three. I imagine a C thirty six probably at least ten or twelve for a really nice one. One hundred ninety thousand miles. Nothing in the one hundred ninety thousand miles is sorted. That does. That's never happened before. That yeah. doesn't exist. Uh, the last question, and if you at, if you answered a question we didn't get to, I'm sorry, but I said that this was going to be the last one before, and I'll try to leave up the window and get to it next show. But we have to end this one soon. Not Ben 101 says, why is nobody buying new Cadillacs? It's simple. They're only making cars. They don't make any SUVs. I mean, it's a joke. The, the Escalade is outdated compared to Navigator, new Range Rover. It's a joke. The, the X-T5 is old. They're finally coming out with a little SUV, the X-T4, finally. But they've devoted their entire R&D budget to cars. The, 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 the Super Cruise, which is their amazing new technology, they're only putting it in full-size sedan. Nobody is in that market anymore. I think Cadillac has made massive mistakes. This X-T4 looks kind of it's nice. It's super cool looking. Where was it three years ago? Yeah, and, totally. And 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 Actually, this is a very nice looking totally. car. They don't have is a this out row. yet? It just came out like this week, this month. Really? They don't have a three row. They don't have a three row. Escalade is the only one, and it's a body on frame V8. Where is a competitor to like an MDX? Is this like the size of a Ford Edge? Is it is the about? size of a Lexus, like oh, UX. Here's the, look, here's it's, the competitors. It's a little. It's a compact. Yeah. Here's so the, here, so I it's think compared Q5, to X3, it's, it's not that Q5, big. It's like RDX. Q3 size. Yeah, RDX. Yeah. yeah. It's it's that level. But like, come it's on. A really nice it rdx came out in 05 yeah. this car is 15 years late i'm i am have a strong opinion about this because i think cadillac has spent their money in the wrong way and it sucks because they spent so much time and effort trying to revitalize the brand yeah. and they screwed themselves by not pursuing suvs bmw that, has seven suvs right now and cadillac really? has two they have yeah. seven yeah x1 <laughs> through x7 holy shit they do don't they yeah <laughs> that x7 is not pretty the yeah, giant but you feet. know it's going to sell. You're going to oh, see a thousand a million, of them oh, right here. Sell a million of them, yeah. 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 Uh, my dad uh, bought an Escalade last year. Really? Yeah, 30 on the hood. Oh. 30. <laughs> Probably sticker more price, now, too. Sticker price was 90 grand. He got it for 60 out the door. Wow. Yeah. Well, at that price... At sixty, it's become a pretty good car. Yeah, yeah, and he drives on. He, he commutes to Manhattan in it. So it's got sh shitty roads and you know, yeah, you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, but thirty on the hood. Hard That's to argue with that. Absolutely hard. That's yeah. my he'll take probably on still, He'll probably still lose forty grand. <laughs> he, he probably will. Yeah. <laughs> But that's a good. No, it's a totally good rational uh, thing. Is it, it's it's that's Ford is ditching all their cars because people are buying SUVs. Cadillac was slow to adapt. Yeah, BMW is is on that game, and Cadillac plus that move to New York. Johan, Johan, how much how much time was and effort was wasted on, on that? Doing that when they should have been building SUVs and their naming scheme. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever. they really tried to make the V the CTSV is rad. It's awesome. And Nobody ATSV was them. cool, but that's getting canceled. Yeah. Nobody is into cars are dead. Yeah. 
as if we're talking about why no one is buying them, uh, you know, I mean, uh, whatever. But like on a, from an economic perspective, they just need to build more SUVs. Even I, uh, you know, I was in Europe this past summer. Crossovers are I selling know. in Europe. I know. You know, all the whole, all their, their this whole, skinny. this whole Americans only buy SUVs. Yeah, go to Europe. At CRVs, Rav4s, yep. Rogue. Yep. They're, whatever the Cash Kai, whatever they call it. Cash Kai. Those things yeah. are everywhere. everywhere. Dubai. Totally. It's 100% yeah. SUV market. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, I think people live in the cities. The roads aren't you know great, and, yep. and the SUVs handle well for the most part. And I mean, they're getting the kind of fuel economy that cars used to get. Right. So there's not much trade off. Yeah, and you know they have more room mm-hmm. typically, more shoulder room and whatever. And Other cars, you know, position. with the the passenger or the pedestrian crash areas, you know, cars are getting more bunker like. The shoulders are getting oh. higher. The windows are getting yeah. smaller. So if you want the size windows that you used to get in a car, right? That's you right. Know, if you want if you that want, visibility, the the light, yeah. The, yeah totally. If you want windows that are the size of a BMW E30, you have to buy an X5 yeah, now. That's right? exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And even that isn't still on that level. Totally. Doug DeMuro, ladies and gentlemen. Look how many fucking muffins he went through. <laughs> this is dinner. This is all I'm eating today. Oh, my God. You want a muffin? No. Come I'm on. I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to go eat dinner. Please eat me. No. One yep. muffin. I'll eat one. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Ralph's, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Doug DeMuro, of course, on YouTube. Follow Doug on Instagram. I'm not going to pull up his YouTube channel because I don't want to get copyrighted, but you know where to find Doug. Autotrader.com slash oversteer. Autotrader.com slash You want to plug anything else before you get out here? No, that's all I got. Thanks for coming in, ma'am. Yeah, thanks this for having me. This is absolutely a show worth coming in on a Sunday for. You are appreciate one of my favorite people in this biz, and I appreciate it. Oh, and I, thanks, It's man. nice to see you this morning, too. You, are, you made me unfamous. <laughs> <laughs> You're now so famous that I'm, I don't uh, agree my that career at all. is You're fucking over. You're still the guy. Every, when I go to shoot cars, everybody says, what, Matt, what's Matt Farrell like? Oh, what's he really like? What's I'm, he? I'm like this. <laughs> I'm exactly the same all the time. Yeah. And I don't hate people just to, like turn off my Instagram comments. You, you're going to turn it back on at some point, right? Maybe. We'll see. Turn it back on. I'll, leave, people, you, I'll leave you a nice comment. Listen, if people. someone really wants to get a hold of me. Yeah, but not, I want a public to comment it. to be out there for people to see. I'm in, you, you turn know, it back on. I'll, I'll, say, you don't need I'll my, say something you nice don't need to you. My comments. You have my phone number. You can, you can text me if you have <laughs> no, a real I'll comment. I'll say something nice to you. Don't. I do text you sometimes. You do. I <laughs> About appreciate, instead I appreciate of it. You text me. I text you VIN numbers to run on your car back. <laughs> yeah, I think did I have you run my Lambo? Is that what I had you run? I, I had, think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah, you were like, oh, it's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> which you don't always see for this. No, uh, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you for Safe having me. Travels home. Thank you. Yeah, eat, eat real food, please. No, no, no. This is perfect. All right. Goodbye. I'm gonna finish this.